Welcome to the Alex Kendrick Show, episode seven. Um, it is Mother's Day. I would like to go ahead and say Happy Mother's Day to any mothers that are watching. Thank you for uh, bearing children and blah blah blah. Um, we have some special, awesome guests this week. Um, from the top, sorry, brain scrambled here. Uh, from the top, uh, Aaron Stickoner. Um, a really good friend of mine who I met um, at the very beginning of my touring career, um, as well as Dickie Allen. Um, they were uh, both in Abiotic, and I was touring with them for a bit, and um, that's kind of how we all met. And um, everyone's a bit busy doing other things now, which is uh, pretty cool. We have Colton from Angel Maker. That's going to be really fun. A good friend. I uh, mixed them on Rings of Saturn's most recent United States headliner. I uh, always love having a tour with Angel Maker on it. Great, uh, great, great group of dudes. Uh, let's see. Mr. Defont himself, the booking agent extraordinaire. I'm uh, very excited to have him on. We'll get some resourceful information, um, maybe about this whole pandemic kind of stuff going on. And uh, joining me back again will be Kyle. So that'll be awesome to have uh, my right hand man back uh, back here in action. So um, let's see. I'm trying to think if there's anything off the top of my head that I want to get off before this starts, but uh, I don't really think so. I just I don't know. Happy Mother's Day. Go talk to your moms or something. Um, Let's uh, go ahead and bring everyone out and uh, get to chatting. And if you're in the chats and watching, let us know what you're doing today for your Mother's Day. Let us know what you're doing for your mom. Let us know what you're doing for yourself, whatever it is that you're doing for this day. Let's see. Um... Let's see what's going on lately. I'm thinking, I've just been doing the exact same stuff for like six weeks. I uh, just a lot of war zone, a lot of that. But I am uh, working on the next couple episodes already, and I should have my uh, rig up full time. Shout out to if you're on Twitch, Cosmic underscore Yeti. I'll have that in the comments. That's my roommate. He's uh, letting me borrow his rig here. He was uh, kind of you know letting me do this. There we go. Now we got people calling. Oh, wow. hey, baby. Hello. How's it going, man? It's good to see your beautiful faces. Hello. 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 Look at these Hello. guys. What's up, boys? Men. 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 So good. <laughs> I think we're just waiting on video from Defonce. Oh, Dude, I'm loving that hat. Oh, there I am. There he is. Oh, yes. Awesome. So it looks like everyone's here. Thank you guys all for uh, yeah. taking time out of your day to, you know, look, come on this little journey with me. I like to call yeah. a show. <laughs> journey. <laughs> Not doing a whole lot. But. Yeah. Um, I'm going to do like a real basic introduction, but uh, instead of me introducing you guys, I'm going to let you guys talk to um, whoever's watching on Twitch and Facebook. So we'll start with Colin. Yeah. Colin, yeah, what's tell up? the folks uh, what you do, who you are, where you're from. So I'm Colin. Hello. Um, I'm super unimportant and nobody loves me. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I love oh, you. Um, I, I love do, Colin. I do, right. okay. oh, I love you guys. <laughs> Uh, I do front of house for Cattle Decapitation, mostly. Um, I've also done a countless amount of other bands for short periods of time. Um, Author and Punisher included. Let's plug on this hoodie because it's super comfortable. Very nice. Um, sick. <laughs> uh, hi, Tristan, if you're watching. Um, work at Brick by Brick, whom most of you guys have played at at San Diego, California. Um, oh, this is great. And uh, I really love uh, Thai food and Poke Bowls. Okay. Hell yeah. <laughs> I like that. Nice. Oh, yeah. That's, a, that's a hell of an intro. I like yeah. it. Thanks, bud. <laughs> What's your favorite fish soup in your, in your Poke? I gotta Ooh, know that. Probably Ahi. Really love Ahi. I, uh, I'm an Ahi fan. Um, Colton, let's move over to you. Let's tell, uh, tell the people who you are, where you're from, what you do. Hello. I am Colton. I uh, 
play guitar in Angel Maker. I'm from Vancouver, BC, Canada. I'm currently on uh, Vancouver Island, uh, staying in my parents' place uh, until the the shit storm has has cleared. Um, <laughs> that's 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 what I got. Very nice, um, Mr. Daniel. Oh, I'm. Yeah. I, hello, I am. Hello, a booking, I'm a booking agent at Continental Touring. I work for Unique Leader Records. We're on the Devastation on the Nation tour. Hell yeah! And uh, yeah, you know that's that's it right now. <laughs> um, yeah. That's who I am. <laughs> we'll definitely uh, dive into some more of the the business aspect of uh, this whole pandemic and how it's affecting that a little bit later on. Um, yeah, for sure. Beautiful. Sugar Cookie, Snowflake, um, A.A. Ron, any other abiotic references I can't remember. <laughs> oh my God. Um, I don't remember Sugar Cookie. My brother's the one that goes by Sugar Cookie. But, uh, oh, hey, maybe man, I was thinking of... Uh, yeah, I'm, maybe uh, I confused it. <laughs> whatever. Uh, yeah, my name is Aaron. I play drums for uh, a couple bands right now and a bunch of bands over the years. I've been touring with Alex for a long, long time. Ever since I started touring, actually. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so, and naturally we'll move on to Dicky. What's up, brother? By the way, I love your PC build back there. That's yeah, that's, freaking that's awesome. yeah. absolutely beautiful. Is that an L11 dynamic? Uh, what is it? <laughs> is is that is that a an O11 dynamic or is it just bolted to the wall? Oh no, it's not bolted to the wall. It's just standing there. I forget what it's called. It's one of the thermo thermal takes. Uh, oh, sick! Nice. Honest. It's supposed to have a piece of glass here, but I like it without it. Super, uh, super open concept. I like, I dig it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that but I guess, uh, yeah, I, uh, Dick from Infinite Annihilator and, uh, Scumfuck, and, uh, I stream Twitch as well. Twitch.tv slash Sir Diggle, shameless pug. Um, uh, <laughs> and yeah, we've been, uh, I met Alex fucking pretty much the second tour I ever did with, with also oh, my yeah. boy Aaron, my boy Aaron. Hey, 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 Ron. He's the one that taught me how to do a bun in my hair. <laughs> Is that true? <laughs> yeah. Wait, it was. I need to learn that. It was me or That's Kendrick fun. that taught you how to That's do a bun in your hair? Both of you. Both of you. Somewhat, sometime in Canada. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Speaking of Canada, <laughs> should we talk about our first time in Canada together just to start it off? We'll get this man a pupper. Sure. We, don't have, okay. we don't have to talk about mine, now. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> See, I actually wouldn't have ever let it loose. That was the first time me and Alex met on that tour. Uh, remember? Kind of? I want to hear it. Remember? Kind of? Canada. Never mind. You guys do yours. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we'll actually save that later down for uh, later in the segment. We'll get into some yeah. juicy, fun tour stories. Can't start off. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Kyle, what have you been doing, man? Have, what you been up to? Well, we are heavily into the new boss record we're recording that right now and uh i've been working with unique leader records as well doing some graphic design stuff and uh, i've also been streaming as well and you can find that at kyle of sacrifice twitch.tv slash kyle of sacrifice uh, other than that i've been helping you out with these streams we've been yeah we're having sure. lots of sick guests well, on here shout out to uh shout out to you for being shout the god of the yeah, the homie man. Yeah, yeah. Well, Kyle's you know, very good at that. Yeah, I just oh. found his, uh, your stream the other day too, and I was stoked. I'm glad that we and we started playing Valorant next day. Oh, yeah, ooh, my boy, that's sick. We're my slapping, boy. slapping cheeks on that game. Mm-hmm. Yo, teach me how to be good at it. I will, man. Let's do that's it. That's Kyle, man. He's the hard carry. <laughs> Um, so I guess I'll start with like a pretty uh, typical question, I would say, for what I've been doing. Uh, was anyone supposed to be playing shows right now? Or on tour? Uh, anything? We had an That's offer uh, that pretty much what wasn't an offer anymore. So that was... Yeah, that was we just had a tour like <laughs> offer just go away. Yeah, yeah which I was pretty supposed to out by now or something. Yeah. For what do you call Scumfuck. I did, don't know if I'm allowed to say, but yes. Yeah, fair enough. That's kind of yeah. same <laughs> probably, probably like two or three times over now. Yeah. 
I know, yeah, I bet, dude, people, uh, like you guys that are touring every other month or every, uh, only having like a week or time chilling, man. For me, yeah. I'm just, I was just getting back into it and then all this shit happened. Yeah. That was, I feel that, that was dude. really fun. I'm really glad I was able to do that first Scumfuck tour. It was nice oh, to yeah, dude. be there for the first time back. You and my fucking dad, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this man brought his dad on tour. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He came and drove for us, man. <laughs> Why not? It was hilarious. That's you so can cool. trust it was, it was actually, daddy. It was pretty cool. Yeah. He's a he's a dad at some moments, but other than that, he definitely just likes to drink beer and smoke like the rest of us, so... Awesome. I, I, th I think I got him to drink a White Claw. Oh, yeah, remember. you did. 100%. Oh, yeah. 100%. Alex, you, Alex you've, you've gotten everyone to drink at least one White Claw in their life. Yep. I think my uh, my favorite White Claw moment on Summer Slaughter, aside from the entirety of calling it Summer Clauder, was like yeah. winning over Travis Ryan on White Claw. Oh, yeah. He was like, you know, yeah. I guess That's like one night when we were driving, uh, he was like, fuck, these are actually kind of good. It's Dude, the skit he did. Remember the skit? With the White Claws that he did? Yeah. Oh, remember that? Oh, yeah. that was hilarious. Oh, yeah, that video. Yeah, yeah. So, right. so, so, so fun, fun fact, fun facts about that one. Um, it, it ended actually a little bit prematurely because there was, um, hey, yeah, um, the rest of the video was actually supposed to be like everyone throwing white claw cans at him and then him laying on the floor afterwards with like his hand over his face <laughs> saying like, uh, I guess the claw is the law. And, and <laughs> unfortunately, we had to hit the stage before oh we could actually we could finish it. do the what rest of the video. What show was that again? What, what location? That it was, was in the Carolinas, Carolina. so it was like north or south. That was an orange peel. Okay, okay. I'm, dude, oh, that show cool. had like the, the staircase and the elevator, I remember that. Mm -hmm. That really tall yeah, was, staircase was, going up to the venue. It was the venue that had a bunch of Trulies. Trulies. Oh, oh, yeah. Come oh. on, dude. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, they're not that bad. They're not they're truly a disgraceful. I mean, I'm literally drinking a white ball right now. Hell yeah. Yeah, I saw I saw the picture of the fridge, man. Yeah, I, I, I just got bushed. I just got bushed. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. The, Aaron, what do you got yeah. going on over there? You munching? Uh, you, you sipping? I got a little coffee. I mean, it's only uh, it's only. Like four, three, four, 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 yeah. right now, that but I also woke up shirt? like an hour ago. I'm proud of you. And you didn't start already? Huh? You said it's four, and you haven't started drinking already? <laughs> Jeez. I just woke up. I had a, I, I had a late night. So Sounds I, like an excuse. I, I woke up at like, yeah, I, I suppose <laughs> so. I actually was downstairs and I was, and I was debating between grabbing coffee or sipping on tequila. And I chose coffee. Um, I may end up going to get tequila later on. You probably should. It's, you know, it's always should. a better option not to go straight to liquor, but you know. Uh, yeah. What time is it? All right. I'll do it on the dot. Like. We'll right have to ask five. old Uncle Al we'll what right he thinks course. about the liquor. Oh, no. You know. <laughs> I've got a question for everybody yeah, though. Last time you've seen Uncle Al, I haven't seen Uncle Al in a minute. Uh, and not tomorrow, but the day after will be two months without any booze. Nice. Oh, shit. Congrats. Good job, buddy. Yeah. Congrats, dude. Congrats. 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 Which, uh, which most of you guys know how freaking hard I usually go on tour, which, like, isn't that maintainable to do. And oh, I was yeah. starting to do that outside of tour, so it was yeah. really, really chaotic. Fuck Some of you guys know more than Thumbs most, up. but, it, you know. You did it. Then. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. nonetheless, I will cheers yeah. everyone and their white claw and whatever you cheers. may have. Cheers, yeah, cheers. empty bush. Cheers huh? to bush. Yeah. Yeah. What are you sipping on up there, Colton? This is a Canadian company. They're they're called uh, it's like Slack. Uh, what is it called? Drop Jaw. Uh, they make kind of like coolers, but they're they they feel they taste like quality coolers, like very nostalgic flavors. Like this nice. is like a it's like a peach cooler, but it's not super sweet, um, mm. but very like fuzzy peach kind of flavor, very candy Ooh. flavor. Ooh, fuzzy peach. Um, it's like a, it's a definitely a guilty pleasure that I've been indulging in recently. But um, they have, yeah, yeah, peach cherry. The grape one is my favorite. It tastes, uh, yeah, kind of tastes like cough syrup, but like Dimetap. It's really good. I don't know. <laughs> it tastes but, like cough syrup. It's good. Yeah. They're on the nostalgia like the kind. Of they yeah. Have force. In a I got a question. Um, I, I noticed Kyle said you, had, you, had, you said you had a question, right? I have a question. And we're yeah. going to start. We're going to do this in order. 
<laughs> Alex Kendrick, favorite White Claw yes. fa- flavor. Oh, oh easy. Hands down, <laughs> without, a, without a fucking uh, doubt, ruby grapefruit. Really? Oh, yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Why? Without they, a doubt. No. <laughs> yeah, it's better no. than all the new flavors. Like, oh, oh, man. Oh, man. So and ruby red, red, like, I, I, I used to be a raspberry and a black cherry fan, but I, I've noticed they got like too sweet too fast. And then like the, uh, the grapefruit one was kind of just like a nice neutral kind of like easy sipper. Yeah. Daniel I mean, Lafonts. really, they're all easy sippers, but, you know. They're yeah. all, yeah, I mean, I, I thought it was going to be worse than what it was, and then, yeah. You, you try um, one, yeah, it's super easy. What about, uh... It, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Donnie Hill. <laughs> Donnie yeah. Hill, the man, the myth, the legend. He was just over at my house. He had to make a little trip. Uh, he'll be back over here in a few days or something. Um, what, are, what, what are you guys' though? Let's 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 finish this question off. What are, what are you guys' favorite claws? Let's start with the fonts. I really like the watermelon one. It's really fucking good. I haven't. I tried haven't had it yet, yet dude. The one I haven't dude, tried. New pack is yeah. good, dude. I don't think we have that here, dude. Yeah, yeah. we ha- we don't have it in Canada yet. Oh, when man. we landed coming back from Europe, um, I actually saw Dick that night staying over at uh, Tyler and Dave's, and I oh, j- yeah. just got the new variety pack, and I like tried the lemon and the the tangerine, good, but Lam- get around yeah. to the watermelon. That's Yo, what that I'm doing tangerine right now, one was actually really fucking good. Yeah, it's fucking fantastic. I love it. They're all good. Dicky. Yeah. What's your pick? Oh, the grapefruit. <laughs> grapefruit? Yeah, All right, we got two yeah, grapefruits, one red, water. Let's go. Grapefruits. It is, it's so I'm good. about to crack a lemon right now. Mm. Wait, what'd you call me? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh... Uh, it was like a couple months ago before like lockdown and everything uh i shot a video with my friend andrew baina and we did this like oh it was like 10 white claws like, oh i saw that 10 riff death 10 Shit, death riff challenge <laughs> and so that was like the first time i got intimate with like all the flavors because i got to try a bunch of them and drink mm-hmm. a lot of them and i think is, yeah. i think my favorite was uh it was cherry or I, there's a mango right yeah, yeah, mangoes, yeah, mangoes, yeah, mangoes yeah. yeah, I like the, I like both of those ones a lot. Yeah. yeah. I want to know. I mean, right here first. First. Raspberry's a close second, though. I must say, I really do Dude, like raspberry. Good. Yeah. Raspberry. Yeah. yeah. I remember buying a twelve oh, pack. Shit, one I night. The same <laughs> Awful. Awful. Dude, I, I remember think we buying already a know yours. pack one night on fucking uh, the last the Oceano tour, and I was literally laying in the hotel like stairway drinking them. <laughs> talk, talk on the phone yeah, with my man. girlfriend on like video chat, and I was just not giving a shit, dude. <laughs> White People claw has led me to me. some uh, some precarious scenarios. Sometimes the claw, you know, scratches back. Yeah. Oh yeah, well, <laughs> trust me, I oh, felt yeah. it the next day. I felt yeah. it the next day. Dave hey, likes hey, to Ron, say that we have the same one, right? Hey, you said sometimes the claw scratches back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what is the reaction? Well, no, I was just waiting for everybody to finish talking. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> oh, what, uh, what's your claw favorite? We have the same one, right, Darren? Or no? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. How about it's you, Kyle? Ruby? Yeah. I'm oh, a liar. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, no, it's all good. I was just gonna say it's it's ruby, and then of all the original flavors, it's followed by lime. I haven't tried yeah. the new ones enough yeah. to really know how to how to yeah. how to rank them, but yeah, I like the citrus one. Yeah, yeah. ruby and lime are definitely my one and two. Mm-hmm. Um, Limes my go-to. Whoa, yeah, voice crack. crack. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Ooh. <laughs> Going through puberty at thirty. That's fine. <laughs> I, oh, I'm not gonna lie, boys. I have absolutely nothing written for the show today. I didn't write anything, no notes, <laughs> anything that I usually do for the other episodes, and I put all my full trust into you guys. That's <laughs> totally. Yeah, I, I, I have a did, white claw hack for you guys. Did Paul yeah. give his white claw? Flavor I did yet? not. We have Colin. Yeah. Oh yeah, Colin. Waiting, and and here here's the white claw hack for you guys. So. 
round round these parts, you got um, a uh, a good amount of Mexican candies, right? Because we're we're pretty close to the border here. Um, mm-hmm. If you take a mango white claw and put tahini seasoning around the rim, and then drink the white claw, it tastes exactly like um, those Mexican Lucas candies. So that's that's my white claw hack. That's my go-to. Oh, you gotta, you gotta sprinkle oh, a little tahini like seasoning around the rim of a mango. Okay. It'll change your fucking life, man. I swear. Put the that actually drink. sounds very good. I mean, we you could put the tahini something. in the drink, but oh, around, around the rim, oh. you get like this nice, like, the, the first bite, and then yeah. you know, the liquid washes yeah. it down and kind of mixes yeah, the flavors. Yeah. Right it's delicious. It's fancy. White Huge. Claw nice. I like that. Just the beginning of the claw. Yeah, I guess here uh, here leads me to ask: Has anyone made a clock tail before? A clock? What? I've been yeah. one before. Oh yeah, my kind of. Adding vodka in the in the in the claw, right? Oh, I've done that. Oh. Oh. Now I get it. I did. I, I did this horrible. <laughs> I think I my first time thing on the last tour, because um, I was really excited. This was on the Rings of Saturn tour we did back in October, and. Um, I had never had White Claw yet, because at that point, I don't think we had them in Canada. <laughs> and so I was like really, really stoked. Um, I tried one and it was really good. And then I had this horrible idea. I was like, well, and we don't get, wait, we don't really have Four Locos in Canada either. So I always, like, I'll oh, I'll have a couple when I go into your down the States. That's horrible. But, um, <laughs> crazy, <laughs> but, 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 okay. So there, you know, you can get the big White Claws, those like the, the huge size ones. Yeah. Um, Tall boys. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, like the big, big ones. I, I just mixed a four loco in one of those because I was like, it'll dilute the sweetness of the four loco. It'll tone it down a bit. Wow. And um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it would. It, uh, you would do that. It only turned it up, and it was. Uh, it was disgusting. Oh. What <laughs> night was that? What no, it actually remember? wasn't too bad. I, I was. I think I was just in the van. Uh, we were driving. It was before the tour started. I think it was on our way to oh, okay. the first show, and I was just we were just hauling it through the night. And I was where was the party. first show? That was Arizona, right? Yeah, Club Red yeah, or something. Sure. Yeah, Club Red. Oh, Club Red. <laughs> oh, uh, oh Burgers my goodness! Fantastic. I just got sad news about another club shutting down Arizona. No, are oh. we allowed to talk about it? I guess Joe's Grotto. Oh, the Grotto. Oh. And chat. Oh, I think the last chat time I was day. there was with uh, you, Aaron. Yeah, I was just going to say, I think it was a faceless ATB rings tour. With oh, we loaded there. in literally right on stage because we got there right for changeover. Dude, we were we showed so, up so late. Like, we were late that tour so much. EJ was so pissed every day, and rightfully <laughs> so, dude. We were. Yeah, I was going to say, looking we back at it, bad. it was like totally, totally warranted. Dude, we were acting like a club, but like doing so well on the tour. It was so weird. Like, it was just, we were not in sync with ourselves. So, after that tour was when we decided to like step it up, and that's when you started um, PMing too. So, that's when I feel like we started acting like, you know, touring adults in that band was after mm. that tour <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. that, that was a fun one um or get old adult, you know <laughs> but yeah yeah so um i'm gonna leave the question over to you mr defense just because you're on the uh the other side of this thing kind of um yeah, how's it bad. looking for these guys playing some <laughs> shows later this year you know what i mean and um, you know, guys like Colin and I, are, are we gonna mix? You know, like what's I'm going hope, on? I'm hoping so. It's like in my head, I'm kind of like indifferent about it because, you know, you I read things that say that like the flu season could make things, you know, spike like the cases of the virus, but then we don't really know if that'll actually happen. But I've had conversations with people that are just like, you know, we think like tours that do like, you know, 100, 200 people will happen, but anything after that maybe may not happen. And then... So we're all good. Huh? I said, so we're all good. I was just making it. <laughs> 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 like, what a perfect <laughs> moment for it to <laughs> lag out. And then it's like, wait, <laughs> <Right>? what happened? <laughs> <laughs> then, then, you know, you start hearing about venues that start closing so like tomcats west and fort worth closed down Dude, which, that was 
you know. That's, that's a bummer. Yeah. yeah, that's a big bummer. I like we just played there on the last tour, I believe, too. Oh, yeah, you did? On the Oceano run? Yeah, I believe so, yeah. Uh, so you hear that, and then right now you hear about this other thing, you, you know, Joe's Grotto and Phoenix, and then it's just like, who well, you know, who's going to make it through all this is where I'm at. Yeah, you know? it, 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 it makes me think, like, you know, how many how many venues are actually going to be able to, you know, make it through this and reopen? You know, exactly. like what's to stop the, the larger market venues from being stuck in the same position, if not a worse one on a larger scale, you know? Yeah. You know, and there's a thing going on right now. It's called, what is it, Save Our Venues? Mm -hmm. Shane Merrill, I mean, I heard about it before Shane Merrill from Reggie sent me it, but it's called um, the National Independent Venue Association, which you can go to saveourstages.com and um, learn yeah. how you help out, you know, for them to get funding for these yeah. independent, to get funding. That's pretty sick because I mean a lot of us uh, I think when at the beginning of all this like really focused on uh, the bands losing money from the tours but never really mm -hmm. focused on the the businesses that were like yeah. really thrived on having those bands there you know that was yeah. their their bread mm -hmm. and butter so like yeah. uh, I think more supporting uh, of the the venues rather than you know buying merch from a band is yeah, sick yeah of course yeah but, I oh, think we need we, these venues. Yeah, exactly. Or yeah. we got nowhere to play, we're, for sure. No, no, yeah. Going. And it sucks. Uh, I think that's it. that'd be a really fucking sick thing for a lot of bands to really get into and trying to do their best to give uh, everybody a fighting chance, you know? Exactly. I think a lot more bands need a... I've sent it to a lot of my bands, the email that Shane sent me, um, with all the info and everything. And I'll send it to you guys, too. But everyone should definitely post about it and push mm -hmm. it because... Um, I think I forget who started it. I think it was a venue up in Minnesota. I'll look on the website, but um, it has a bunch of venues that are like behind it and everything that are, are a part of it. Every probably every venue you guys have been in and played in. There's definitely you know there's a whole list on their website. It's like n i v a s s o c dot org, and um, yeah, just. But I think a lot more people need to start pushing it because we definitely these venues need to get some sort of funding certainly yeah, I mean, the venues you know can't I mean, what's the purpose of the venue without the bands or you yeah. know, the art, you know yeah and, so, and, and it's a symbiotic versa, relationship you know what i mean sure. yeah, yeah it needs to in my opinion it'd be really cool to see some sort of like team up with like i don't know just like this is just the first thing that pops in my brain don't quote me word for word but like see a band sponsor a venue or something and vice versa and they like work together yeah you know sponsor. something like that or yeah yeah, yeah. There, i mean there's a lot of bands that are uh uh donating to uh cha charities and stuff through all this which is a good thing to do yeah, too yeah. but like maybe be able to focus on some of uh you know our inner circle a little bit to make sure that we all still stay alive yeah. as well you know yeah yeah a lot of these venues are becoming charity cases like so quick here yeah. and it's yeah. not looking like it's going to get any better uh, anytime soon for for no. them specifically so yeah yeah, for yeah that's awesome venues, venues, for sure. i'm going to make sure that i uh I, I can push that on angel makers page for sure yeah can you? yeah yeah absolutely yeah guys yeah yeah, sure send it to yeah. All in the group it. and i'll definitely uh, yeah do I'll the best the... i can as well for sure yeah i'll send the email that i got um, Colin, I know you're, uh, you know, you work at Brick by Brick when you're home in a venue, um, yeah. you know, pretty frequently, um, even off of tour. Do you have any word even on your end when you guys are even thinking about, you know, having people yeah. back in? Wrong one. Yeah, I was just going to talk about that weird. Um, so looking, looking at the dates we've booked even into 2021, 2022 um, that haven't been announced yet, there's still, you know, confirmed dates um and and we want we want to try to play by ear as best as possible um i don't know an, an independent venue like ourselves like you know a, a lot of a lot of the larger shows we've had there you know the 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 shows that i, I mean i know you guys have all played brick you know see coming through there like morbid angel and and uh, black dahlia murder you know shows like those like that there's really no room in you know that the money we make from those shows goes directly back into booking another show there's there's no real safety net to be made off of those so we're we're it's it's a tough situation for them um and i th i think 
uh, we're, we're just going to kind of play it by ear as far as um, you know the the shows coming up, um, and we'll we'll move to support bands coming back through as as soon as state orders allow and as soon as um, as soon as it's safe for everyone. Cause Jordan and the guys like they they really you know aside from being smart business owners they really really care about the people that come through those doors. So they want to make sure that. Um, they don't put on a show prematurely or open up the doors prematurely and and put you know our regular patrons at risk or um, you know anything like that so we're, we're just kind of playing it by ear making sure that we make you know smart decisions and and uh, those guys are trying to take care of us too the best they possibly can um, I think uh, I don't know if we have any shirts left but uh, a couple, couple of the venues around here in San Diego have been putting up a uh, uh, special merch to support their uh, to support their staff who you know most of us get you know 1099 we're independent contractors and there's like okay. it's a little a little bit harder to get financial support <laughs> when certainly, you're certainly certainly i'm uh, yeah, so. i definitely feel you on that one <laughs> so um yeah some of the venues have been doing nice stuff with their staff like that um but as far as yeah. reopening to the public i mean it's it's literally a play by ear uh situation um, and I'm sure venues across the country, you know, have to uh, adhere to their state's rules and and their county rules and stuff like that. So it's going to be, it's not going to be an all at once thing, which is which is no. weird, which is going to extend this even further. I feel. Yeah, so, that's what I'm afraid of too. Yeah. Uh, but, I'm uh, curious, so, uh, Aaron, <laughs> what's your take on uh, all this kind of stuff? Like as far as just venue closures, tours canceling, et cetera, et cetera. How's that impacted you, Aaron? <clears throat> Sorry, uh, my connection is lagged out real quick. What did you say? Um, no worries. So um, how has the whole COVID-19 um, bands not being able to play, tours canceling, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, how really like deep has that affected you uh, at all? <clears throat> well... I mean, I'm pretty fortunate because I didn't have any tours booked and I wasn't on any tours that got canceled. Like, we got back from South America a couple weeks before this all broke out and both the Faceless and Interloper were, like, done touring. Well, I mean, Interloper wasn't touring for a while, but Interloper's focus has been on getting a couple of releases out uh, the label that we just signed with. Uh, obviously, I won't say it yet, but, I mean, a lot of people know who it's going to be. But anyway, um, and then the Faceless, same thing, kind of, like, finished an album cycle and we were getting ready to you know write and so that's all good on that end um but it is you know scary thinking about the future as far as like when touring will happen again you know and like how to make money from that um and whatnot but it's been a cool opportunity to work on things that you know i and we don't really ever get to work on you know i feel like i'm always practicing for at least two different band sets like you know all the time when I'm at home because I have some tour that's, that's happening soon or whatever so it's nice to put my focus into like other things whether it's like other styles of drumming or like other instruments or like you know writing music like learning how to write music and just doing other things in music that I've wanted to do for a while that I haven't um, and then like I said getting ready to well not not getting ready to but um, <clears throat> finishing the albums that, that we need to finish you know and not feeling like we're missing out on tours that are going on because we're at home writing you know so i've been really fortunate in this situation but i definitely it feels weird because i know that i mean what's going to happen after months and months and months go by um you know and i'm not touring and none of us are touring and you know like interloper is going to be putting out music real soon it's like a band's debut is going to come out and there aren't going to be any tours you know and it's going to be a debut on like a major record label and it's going to be nothing to like push it aside from online stuff um, fortunately, though, there are, there are a lot of things that facilitate, um, you know, pushing and promoting your band and staying active as a band, you know, like, um, you know, collab videos where you're playing whole, you know, playthroughs of your songs and getting together in, like, a studio room and recording stuff, you know, like the audio tree sessions and, and things like that. So, um, you know, there's a lot of opportunity for bands to do things online and to keep relevant which is cool and i think the other thing that is a little more heartwarming is just the fact that everybody's in it together you know it's not like 
certain bands are fucked and other ones are fine. You know, everybody's in the same situation and everybody's learning how to brand together, band together. And I think that's really cool for sure. Yeah, I I, that, I was thinking about that one day too. If there's one good thing to come out of this, it's all that. It's the fact that like uh, it's bringing a lot more together. It's not really about like, oh, you're uh, you're into deathcore, you're into extreme metal or thrash metal. It's, it's just about like, we're all into death metal. We're all here for the music and for, to, to to be there together uh and then it it's it's opened up a lot of more opportunities for uh the, the like the twitch community or streaming on youtube or just it, it it sucks but it gave more people more time to uh kind of branch off to different things that that uh they wouldn't have expected to branch yeah, off to you know totally I mean, uh, it's definitely i've said it would, before but right. like I, I would have never done something like for example this format uh had i had not had this time yeah, which is sick because, like, I mean, even uh, you know, you got Trevor for, uh, uh, from the Black Dahlia doing it now. Um, fucking oh, Twitch, uh, Jason yeah. from Ingested doing Twitch. Yeah. Um, there's just so many that are just uh, they're they're popping up. They're just and, and it becomes way more personal too. Like it's just uh, which I really appreciate with Twitch in general. You know, mm, it's yeah. uh, just it's a, a cool way more personal aspect. Yeah. It's just as good. I mean, it's not as good as a uh, being in person, obviously, at a show. But if you can get on on camera and be back and forth with each other, it's it's really nice. You know, yeah. it definitely fills that void of not being on tour. Definitely. Yeah, it's a it's a very creative time right now. You know, mm-hmm. exactly. Yeah. Uh, I actually, I okay. So I have <clears throat> regarding all this a question. Excuse me. Um, that my. My buddy and I were talking about this the other day, and I'm wondering what you think. And I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try and word it as best I can, and uh, not be vague. But it is like kind of a broad, I guess, general topic. But basically, so with this whole <clears throat> COVID thing, who was not happening, and and you were just talking about you know venues shutting down, and a lot of a lot of especially like the smaller venues and smaller bands and whatnot are really really heavily affected. He and I were talking, and he was mentioning that he feels there's like some sort of necessary cleansing that's going to go on with with the music industry. And sort of what he meant was a lot of like, maybe not, you know, <clears throat> just because the fact that you're a small band or a small booking agency or a small venue or whatever, that this should be happening. But a lot of like the shady venue owners and, and like the real, you know, shitty, crummy promoters and like those bands that have been a band for like, five to ten years that just like it's not just that they aren't a good band but you know like they're not really like good people or they're just like saturating the market with like stuff that they're doing it for the wrong reasons yeah you know what i mean all all these bands are saturating yeah are like saturating the market and like bringing it down like bands venues promoters booking agents etc 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 yeah yeah and and he was and he was talking about how like I feel like a necessary cleansing that's been coming on for years and years, maybe even like over a decade, might finally happen and we're going to get rid of a lot of this shit and like in turn a lot of the good bands and good promoters and et cetera, et cetera, are going to do a lot better and he feels like after this is done, there's going to be a lot more like gold shining, you know what I mean? I I agree with with that, but there's also so, uh, something that something I was just thinking about uh, the the shitty promoter aspect, right? Like, there's a reason those guys thrive, it's because they make a fuck ton of money, and they're shady about it. So, do you yeah. think those dudes that make a fuck ton of money through being shady are going to come back into this business because they've stashed away so much cash, or it, because it has been lucrative for them, or hmm. do you think they'll I mean, they'll abandon they'll abandon their pyramid scheme essentially and move on to something else? I, mean, I don't sorry. I don't really sorry. know that I'd say that like those shady promoters or whatever are or like shady booking agents are really thriving because it's like I mean you pull one shady move yeah sure you come off with like you know a couple thousand bucks or less or whatever because I mean we're talking with like extreme metal you know like how right. how yeah. much money is a shady promoter going to bring in one night like it could be less than a thousand yeah. but anyway I'm, I mean they 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 do that and then you know news travels fast you know word of mouth right. is really quick right. so 
it's not as if like they're making those deals over and over and over and over, you know. So like guys that are taking money from bands, you know, that are like supposed to book a tour for them, and then and then they never do. They're not going to make money from that band ever again. And you know, sure they'll be able to rip off other bands, but it's definitely going to decrease. So I don't know that I say that those guys are like, you know, stashed away. But yeah, well, I mean, that's another thing. That's what I wanted to say. Is like, do you think they're being shady to like put a t- put their savings away, or you think they're being shady because they need the cash and they like. That's why they're being shady. You know That's what I mean? That's too, yeah. There's definitely like, th- two they're obviously that, not like which... saving their money, investing it in the right way. They're they're being shady because they need the cash. I mean, I don't, that's how I would assume it. I don't know. Yeah. Or you could just be a thief yeah, just to be a thief. True. Yeah. yeah. You know, At that but point I, I it's just like klepto levels. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, you it, you like you feel you need to like keep which doing is probably this maybe twenty five percent. Maybe, maybe I'll say ten percent of the the shady people who are actually just doing it because they enjoy doing it. I'd say. That's because I don't want to. I don't want to say everybody's just being a uh, klepto. Yeah. <laughs> there, there's also well, yeah, like, certainly. There, there's also at least from what I've observed, like the the old school way, like you were talking about, Aaron, the necessary cleansing of like the old school way, quote unquote, of doing things. Like there's there's a lot of promoters, at least that I've seen here in San Diego, that are like. Their business practice hasn't evolved since 1980, you know, and they're yeah. they're still they're still the doing past. the same things. They're still their package hasn't changed. They're probably their their offer letter hasn't changed since '82, you know, <laughs> like it's 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 the same sort of thing, and it's not going to be worth it to them anymore. I don't think, yeah. at least to maintain the I same know. business practice that they've had. Right. Yeah, but that's yeah. a very valid point. So, what about the band aspect? What do you guys think as far as like bands, you know, like that, I mean, for, for lack of a better phrase, like shouldn't be around for whatever reason or another that are kind of and don't really need to be there and kind of saturating uh, and poisoning well. What do you guys think about that whole aspect? Mm, Dan, uh, maybe? Per- uh, I don't know. The- personally, I think it's pretty like necessary you know what I mean? Like, because, uh, you know, the market is oversaturated. I'll say it. I don't feel bad saying it. You no, know I what I mean? Like, I, I think it's oversaturated, but at the same time, a band's going to be unique and going to sell themselves yeah. the way they should. Like, I, you know, uh, yeah, exactly. So it might be oversaturated where it's like everybody's trying to tour and everybody's trying to sound a certain way. But in the end, promoters see where the the bands are actually thriving or which bands are actually thriving rather than the ones that are just trying to fucking be like every other one you know what i mean so i mean in a way it this does help like stop all the bands just straight trying to go out there and just make a quick buck uh trying to play everything out el- everybody else is playing but at the same mm-hmm. time if they're trying to play everything everybody else is playing i don't think that they would have lasted as long anyway you know what i mean that's fair and, yeah. you know, like, their longevity is probably still about the same. Mm-hmm. They're, they're going to come in and out just as quick. Yeah. I For think, sure. like, with the whole, like, cleansing aspect, like, it'll definitely at least unify a lot. Like, because obviously, like, for example, like, this is a small group of people in the community. But, like, just throughout the people we know and the people that we know that know other people, that almost just sums up the entire metal community to a, a pretty large extent in my opinion yeah so it's like it's it's a pretty small circle but like you'll really see who uh wants to stick through all of this and like come back and actually has the willpower to like you I, know get to the other side not yeah. even really just the metal community i mean this whole thing is really well, just everyone. shows uh yeah it's who, hitting, like, who's the whole, really it's the whole entertainment who's gonna industry. make it who's gonna talk about yeah, well, yeah. entertainment, just being a person who's going to go out and do the right thing or some shit. It really just, a uh, pandemic like this just made it just like who's going to be the good guy, you know, yeah. or who's just kind of fake as shit. Uh, where they yeah. say, oh, I'll do it, but mm-hmm. in the end, they're kind of just not, yeah, they're not into it. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah it's cool like that because I, it, yeah, sorry, you finished, Diggy. No, you're good, man. I, I just think it shows a lot, like you said, with the metal community specifically, too, because there are people that are just like, it, it's not really anything to it. And then there are people that are really trying to do their best to make sure that, like you said, with the the, uh, the venues and stuff like that. I, I didn't know about that, but I would love to try my best to help out with that. Like, 
there are people who are going there out of their way rather than ones that are just like, ah, yeah, screw it, you know, don't, not gonna tour, I'm just gonna write an album, you know, fucking just thrive off this, I'm gonna sell these dumbass merch things and just have some fun, and <laughs> it is what it is, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think know. everyone being in the in the same, like, like I mean, there's going to be differences for everyone, their living situations and, and, you know, what jobs they have at home. But, like, as musicians, we really are, like, we're doing the same thing right now. Like, we're being forced into this very unique situation. And which, yeah, like... It's interesting to think, yeah, like what's it going to be like at the end of this? Because there, you know, there will eventually be an end, and like who's gonna who's gonna make it? It's, I think it's going to be about like who's who's playing ball, like you know. And we all think, you know, it's going to be like coming together and making things happen together. Mm-hmm. And then I think the bands who aren't with it, I think, and you know, maybe those are just maybe those are just like those those filler bands, those bands that weren't even going to be around or weren't in it for the right reasons, but. Yeah, it's really, it's just so unique. I keep saying this like to myself, just like this is so strange, and it is. Well, I, I, I want, I don't want to say like I can't say something like this is so cool or anything like that. Like that doesn't sound right. But yeah. nobody <laughs> in our lifetime has had to deal with something like this. Yeah, yeah. With a pandemic Dude, like this, you know what I mean? Stuff. Musician or not, like we. Yeah, it's everyone. Even your grandmother hasn't had to deal with like like this deadly virus shutting down a whole country. You know what I mean? Whole world. Yeah, yeah, the whole yeah. world. No, nobody in our lifetime has had to deal with this, so it's like a super wow. rare thing. When that is like, it's really interesting. Like, w- li- interesting. Go- living through it is like, uh, it what is what's gonna happen? Because you don't know what's gonna happen. Mm-hmm. How how is it all gonna end up afterwards? Because we're still, <clears throat> you just you just don't know. Which is, and it's just a crazy, uh, crazy thing. Because I mean, music industry, the filming industry, the video game industry, they're all postponed. Oh, it's yeah, not. Yeah. Ju- yeah, it's not just, it's not us, just us, you know. Yeah, yeah. for like, sure. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I, don't, I don't know about you guys, but I didn't think pandemic when I thought about going into the music industry. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> I've been doing it for fourteen years, and this has never happened before. <laughs> In the last, well, like, well, three the, weeks, I've it, yeah. it was a really <laughs> unique. It was a, a interesting time, like when it really started. You know, it happened so qu- fast, like going from just talk. And then, like, bam! No, this is real. I actually work at a venue uh, when I'm home from tour, so uh, I just as a stagehand, and um, it's like a 1500 cap venue right downtown Vancouver. Uh, I love working there, and spring is, as we all know, like s- starts getting oh, quite busy for yeah. tours and shows oh, and everything. Yeah. And so up. it was crazy. You know, I had I was really looking forward. We, we Angel Maker wasn't going to be. Uh, attempting to tour until in, uh, the summer but we were planning to be down in the states in the spring to uh to record some music um mm-hmm. so not too bad there but uh with that being said i was really stoked to actually be home for for a few consecutive months to make some money during a busy time and um yeah it was it was one week i was working and then i had a whole week of shows lined up and then it was like one knocked off and i was like okay maybe that's just one so people are kind of getting a little bit iffy and then bam everything and yeah. and we are i think our venue doesn't have anything like booked I mean, it's still like tentatively booked uh, until the end of november uh so yeah very quick yeah and, and then all you know all of a sudden we're just in it bam yeah mm-hmm. it, it's super weird too because like uh my mom works at uh bj's so she's in a sense i mean she's like a Central. uh yeah, well, and she's like one of uh, like um, one of the supervisors. She's big. Uh, she's been working there for like twenty seven years. So oh, she's shit. a yeah. So she's wow, the one weird. that has to be there. And then yeah. my girlfriend works at a another smaller uh, like su- like supermarket. So they became essential. So now like to really everybody around me has still just been working lately. So. To be yeah. for me, I mean, it hasn't changed too much other than the fact that, uh, uh, I, yeah, it just really hasn't changed too much. I I was doing uh, construction for a while, and then I decided to stop doing construction and focus more on like the streaming and uh, trying to make scumfuck more of a, a thing. And I was just focusing more on myself and uh, my career, I guess I would say. 
yeah right around the time all this stuff happened so it didn't really affect me too much other than the fact that scumfuck just started touring like we yeah. just started playing shows uh, and like we had so much more to come with everything and then like it just kind of came to a stop and uh, put us to a halt you know which yeah. it sucks but uh gives us time to like really prepare for i guess the next wave of shit i don't know i really don't know yeah it's awesome to hear diggy that it was it was as you know opportune and like for you to be just making that decision to start focusing on twitch and doing all those things and then this being kind of the perfect time for everyone to be you know, oh, just to, you're, you're gonna have yeah, be home and to be tuning into these things and yeah. getting comfortable with Twitch. Like that's that makes me feel good that there's people. You know, th- I it, I don't like I don't like to use good words to describe the thriving. You know, you've been thriving in this in this weird time, uh, well, see, which is I, awesome. But I, I still haven't been trying to like promote it in a way where like I'm using it at to like as uh, to my advantage you know like i don't yeah. want to be like oh co- like COVID, no, you're doing nothing but sitting at home come watch no. me blah blah, blah. <laughs> like, no no I, like i know I, what I, you're doing yeah yeah i barely even post that i'm live i i do like my twitch thing is more i rather sit at like a lower amount of views and sit there and bullshit with people than sit there and have like a hundred two hundred people yeah, hanging out like you know what i mean people I'm yeah overwhelming. It, just, it makes more uh personal <clears throat> for me you know what yeah. i mean and it's a it's a lot more fun. So like, uh, I've I've seen a few people that I've really tried to, uh, like, r- really jump on this. Like, you're at home with them. Come watch me, thing. Yeah. And I I just I'm not yeah. too big on it. Like well, I, it's I I'm not whack. that's not what I, exactly what I want. Yeah, you're do. trying to be respectful. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I don't. I, I just yeah, don't like so to fun. use like terrible things as like a reason to post or like get likes or something like that. That's not my thing. You know what I mean? So, we got that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I just want to hang I'm out with you. I'm going to use this moment yeah. to, uh, uh, to shout out beer, Ian man. and Mike from Rings from watching. Ernie Mike? was in the Twitch chat. Hi, Mike. Nice. Yo, yo, yo. Uh, what the here? What's up, baby? Holy so, uh, shit. We're in the chat. Shoot us some <laughs> questions. Uh, we'll be happy yeah. to get those answered. Can you yes. hear my beeps? Yo, who did you say? Uh, yeah. in, the, in the chat? Beep. I really liked that when you, when you said that. Ian's tuning in. We got Mike Caputo. Oh, I saw Ernie uh, oh, in the Twitch capital. chat. I saw capital. Andrew oh. Beard uh, in the Twitch chat. Yeah, we got Andrew. some uh, some good good homies watching. Thanks for watching, yeah, friends. Cool. Yeah, buds. Hi guys. Hello. 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 <laughs> Mr. Mike. All right. Here, here's a good question from Twitch. What's everyone's shoe size? <laughs> Eleven. Yeah, ten and a half. Eleven and a half. Ten and a half. Isn't like nine and a half with vans, and then sometimes it depends. But I mostly wear vans, so nine and a half. <laughs> it is ten and a half. That's like the benchmark is vans. <laughs> nine and a half. Nine and a half. I I'm a, I'm an eleven and a half guy myself. Oh, eleven and a half. The same. I'm eleven. Those You're are like big boys. S- you big, big socks, I just man. have like I just have a wide foot, you know. You do oh, same, dude. fucking same. Sasquatch feet, Alex. <laughs> oh wow, <laughs> these things, That's nice. these things <laughs> get crusty. It's not not even that they get crusty; they're just like big old paws, like lumbering <laughs> paws. That's you always you always know when you're walking down the hallway. Just <laughs> paw, paw, paw. <laughs> oh hi, Bobby. Oh, uh, is that Rosie? Who is that? Rosie. Yes, yeah, Rosie. Her. Oh love! Ah, oh, she's so cute. <laughs> she's the goodest, goodest girl. What are you, you doing? I got a question for all you guys. <laughs> she looks so serious. All right, here, here, here's Dad. a really, really important question from Twitch. Okay. Who's horny? <laughs> <laughs> of course, I mean Jesus. There's levels. Shout There's out, like, uh, There's so many different uh, levels. Shout, shout out, out Ryan. <laughs> Who said that? I was actually Ryan. just about to ask. Yeah. Uh, when's the last time that you all got laid? That's what I really need to know. Uh, <laughs> son of a... Oh, God. Start with, uh, Alex. How are you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when was the last time? 
This is that new game show. Let's spin the wheel. Ring, 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 ring. What's the uh, What's the uh, the topic? Uh, last time I got laid. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's see. What year is it? Twenty twenty. Oh, um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> summer, <laughs> summer slaughter was two thousand nineteen. How, how long the pandemic been going? <laughs> oh, um, no way. Hold up. Let's see. It's. Uh, I'm gonna have to go back pretty far. <laughs> Go back. And if any of you ladies that say otherwise are watching, I disagree. (laughs) You know what I mean? Um, How about you, you beautiful blonde man? When was the last time you got laid? What? Huh? (laughs) (laughs) What? What? (laughs) Oh my god, behind you. Oh my god. Is my sister. That scared the hell out of me. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So when's the last time? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Aaron. Time. <laughs> yes. Actually, funny story. I'm, um, so, uh, I was out late last night, um, with, uh, with a lady friend, and I was out till, like, 5.30 in the morning, and, uh, I decided to uh, drive and come sleep on my mom's couch because we were all meeting for breakfast for Mother's Day and I was like, if I go to sleep at 6 in the morning at my house, I'm not going to wake up and go over and have breakfast with my family. So I just stayed here. So I'm actually in my sister's room which is why she uh, came over and that crawled under the, under the screen of the, uh, of, the, of the computer. So I'm at, I'm at family's house right now. So, so you're yeah, going to answer the question? Called. Um, no, uh, it. last time, no, 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 I just want to tell the story. Last time, I think it was like, uh, three or four weeks ago. Hmm. An honest hmm. gentleman. Oh, honest, honest, yeah. Not going to lie. I was honest. Still very honest. honest yeah, answer. I mean, I was, I was, I was, I was with a friendly friend, uh, like I said, last night, but, um, did not go all the way. <laughs> hey man, they call me Honest Dave. <laughs> friendly friend over there. That's good. All right, let's uh, throw that one. I guess. I, are we really going to ask everyone this question? Because no, we don't of, have. Oh, yeah. I mean, the only reason I asked was because I have of a this girlfriend, this, though. Like, I didn't yeah, know. So, no. so no, like, like, I mean, same. You know, happens when it happens. Whenever I, I guess I want. Really, I don't. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's not like a thing where I'm just like, ooh, 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 ooh. look who's in the lake. We're literally like a bunch of like 15 year olds on Twitch right yeah. now. Like, can, can you please uh, what, what sample that? Nice. <laughs> so I can use it as my ringtone? Yo, I got you. I got you. Oh, I'm, I'm pulling power. up Reaper right now. It's being recorded. Right. Oh my God. 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 Anyway. Anyway. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try and hit that same topic, but let's get just a little more scandalous. Scandalous. Um, oh God. <laughs> what's everyone's favorite tour hookup, if any? Uh, that's gonna uh, make some other people feel really bad. I feel like <laughs> <laughs> if you don't give a case, you're gonna be upset. That's not bad. Uh, I love it. Uh, <laughs> I I well I'll start. I unfortunately we, we could do, we could just start and just like say the city or like the state or you could say the tour you know just like yeah. or or you well, could it's... just say it and we still don't know and you do it in the side group and here so only us can see it. Uh, I, I'm gonna about, I want to start with the 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 most loser answer you could get out of it. Uh, here we go. Uh, I had a girlfriend both times. Every time I've been on tour, never hooked up with anybody on tour. That's the, bit. That's, the, that's, that's the one, man. That's Is that it. the most loser answer, though? That yeah. sounds kind of like a good that genuine answer. That sounds like answer. you're a good boy well, with a good well, yeah, set of morals. Well, that's a good boy. Well, I mean, but if, we're talking about scandalous. I mean, you start with scandalous. <laughs> that, nothing scandalous <laughs> about being a good boy. Jesus. Death metal good boy. So I'm out. You guys roll the wheel. I'm can I'm too. I'm out of this, too. <laughs> yeah, I'm out of this. <laughs> I'm can. Okay. I love this Georgia. Whenever I'm at Alex's house. Next topic. Ooh. <laughs> um, oh my God. Let's get well, on to Alex, this one. Alex, we got you... a good. 
Huh? You, uh, you seem very keen uh, to to ask us. Yeah, Alex, I feel like well, so you, you, Alex. I, uh, you might as well I actually it. just kind of like thought of it when I heard the laid question. I usually like try and stay away from those on the stream, but I kind of like it now. It's like a nice yeah. new feeling. <laughs> Get a taste for it. Yeah. I mean, if um, no, for you. I'm gonna want to watch. If you, <laughs> you want, <laughs> you know. Like, if, I like. If you can't people recall, people I can help. help. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I think we can all help you there, Alex. Oh, man. <laughs> Man's gotta eat. I don't know what that's you guys are talking about. Man's gotta eat. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Why, that's why Alex. Um, he looks just like Aquaman. <laughs> just, just, just saying that the things I've smelled from Alex's bunk on on top of me when we were on tour together, man. I don't. I, there are a few places he's been. Few. One I or two. It. I don't oh. even know where you're getting this. Oh, that what the hell? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I, I don't even know where this information's coming from. <laughs> you know. First hand experience, bud. For, first hand. <laughs> first nose first nose experience. First, first nose. Experience. The only, yeah. Jesus Christ. The oh, only, the only first hand experience I have is right here. Oh. Hey, oh. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> Um, okay, we're gonna move on. Um, Andrew uh, had a really yeah, good question topic. from Twitch. Um, I'm gonna go, and I quote: "I guess the question I have for all you dudes is, what is the sort of new skill you're all working on right now with the extra time spent at home, or perhaps an existing skill you're improving?" Ooh, that's well, aside, really aside, good. Uh, well, aside from the growing. obvious instruments and stuff like that, you know, I'm growing weed. Uh, Hell I yeah. love growing weed, and it's like been a hobby of mine for like five years. And I haven't been able to do it the last couple of years because I haven't been living at my parents' place. Uh, but since I've been here um, during the pandemic, I've been growing again, and it's been nice. so nice to grow my little babies. And um, I've been making wine. That's really awesome. Nice. Um, fermenting yeah. a bunch of shit, like uh, which is a great hobby. At, like, it's not difficult. Everyone can do it if you guys some like botanism, man. Yeah, right. yeah, making wines. They, they're the Person. elderflowers is is a blooming, so I've been harvesting yeah. elderflower, making like elderflower wine, and that's been nice. Um, well, I, bet, I just started doing weed. fucking tomato plants, cherry yeah, tomato nice. plants. Sick. I feel that, dude. I feel that. Just getting you know they plants. really guys. Uh, growing weed is is compared like all the time to growing tomatoes specifically. So yeah, we're going through that same 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 process for sure. Well, I'm di mine's just outside in a little fucking uh, uh, barrel. With yeah, fucking... me too. Like pretty much. Like yeah. mine, I had to. I did a transplant from like my little solo cups and into a, into bigger planters, and then in a in a couple of weeks, I'll be putting them in the ground and stuff. But nice, nice. Yeah. yeah. Do you awesome. use a hybrid uh, hybrid? Uh, fucking me, jeez. Uh, <laughs> hydroponics tank at all? I don't. No, no. It, yeah, it's no, just it's super. Natural. Yeah, yeah, nice, very, nice, very, very chill. Just right into the ground, outdoor. Like, see what happens. Sweet kind of thing. But uh, we, the weather here in Van, is uh, is is good. It's temperate, uh, and there's not actually a ton of rain in the summer, so it's quite dry, which is good. As long as you keep them watered, then they're good to harvest in uh, September, October, normally. So, how's your? Uh, I mean, since <clears> you're pretty north, how's the snow and everything? We, uh, we, uh, so I'm in the Pacific Northwest. It's a really interesting area. Uh, while the rest of Canada normally gets hit with a ton of snow in the winter and has pretty brutal winters, Kyle can attest. I actually yes. grew up in Toronto, so it, it, it gets pretty <laughs> rough out east and in the middle of Canada. We're in a cool little pocket. Our, our, it's basically the same as Seattle. So anything uh, that goes down in Seattle, it's happening kind of, we're really only about three hours. Uh, north of Seattle, and so uh, just kind of gloomy all the time, and yeah, uh, yeah, and the really, winter just raining, never really raining. snows, never really sunny. It's just we'll we'll get like a week of gloomy. snow in the winter, and then uh, the mountains. Uh, we have the Rocky Mountains that run through, and uh, they all have snow like pretty much all year round. So lots of good skiing and stuff in the winter, but you have to go up to those higher elevations. Uh, but down at the sea level here, it's just yes, yeah, we're, we're very lucky here. Not oh, the yeah. same as the rest of Canada. There's, it's right, right now. It's the uh, Nice and sunny and. Oh yeah, I've only been uh, to Vancouver once, and that was mm -hmm. with uh, Alex and Aaron. Yeah. And 
Rickshaw I mean, Theater, baby. That. Playing the rickshaw. Yeah. 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 Yo, you remember walking outside the back and then like seeing that one guy like just shooting up? On the side oh, yeah. of the road. No, that's, oh, that, yeah. Yeah. I remember being up front, um, and I was out front to smoke a cigarette, and then I went to go smoke uh, a little bit of marijuana, and then uh, <laughs> someone comes up to me with a little pipe, it looks like glass rocks, and he's like, hey, yeah, like, do, do you want a toot? He's like, do you want a toot or a hoot? Oh, yeah, it's the toot. <laughs> a toot. A toot. A toot. <laughs> Dude, that's actually where I got offered crack for the first time. I was in like, Oh, Dude, that right, was right a out great front of Rickshaw. Venue, I was, oh, it's awesome. It's like the, it's the oh, metal, it's the metal spot. It's in the, the worst, one of the worst got? areas. Yeah, so across. The, yeah. yeah, it's a weird yes. area, but I mean, like, I, I feel like a lot of venues are like gyms in the rough, like that. You know. Yeah, yeah. It's a the theater is awesome. A lot of, I have so yeah. many memories there. But yeah, I think I was in grade eight. <laughs> off crack. Out it's just funny off. too. Like only about like a mile or two away, it'll become like way more hardy toity. Like yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's like right, like right down the street, it becomes yeah. just like a yeah. city. And yeah, like, and the city, suit. and then it's like, and you're like, super, oh shit! Yeah. And then you walk out there, and you're like, oh fuck! I mean, I'm either in Chinatown or like the, this shit's just fucking all over the place. It, it, man. It, it's the start. It's so stark from East. Yeah. That, that's like East Van, East Stand, Hastings. Yeah. It, East Hastings is the is the is the bad street. Um, I've, I've been there once, and that's. Everyone that's, knows that's, it. Everyone that's knows how it. much of an impact it, it's had on me. Everyone has a, has a horrible so story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. That's. Like, I don't have any like horrible no, stories. I just got offered like story. illicit drugs. Yeah, you know? they're not I mean, bad just, stories. It's well, just as long so as good. you know how to say no, you know. It's I, I've just had. Yeah. I've had a lot of uh, you know metal friends who have only been to that part of Vancouver, and they just assume the rest of the cities is super nat. It's not a huge city, uh, but seriously, like you 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 walk ten minutes. It, you know, further west from there, and then it's it's quite uh, you know actually fancy and and it's weird. It's 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 crazy, but yeah, it was really fun. That was the, the first night Word. I ever heard uh, fucking uh, Arkspire. Arkspire, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, those are local boys. Yeah, yeah. yeah that was my first God. time ever yeah, hearing them, man. They opened yeah, the was, for the tour package, right? Yeah, yeah. they're yeah. like the local. That's a great like, you know, night, man. support. Oh, they're nuts, though, man. They're crazy. Yeah, yeah our expire really sick. Fun night. Funny dudes, too. Yeah. Dude, I remember, Let's, like, uh... I was warming up for that show, and then I was, like, watching them side stage while I was warming up, and I was like, yo, I don't want to go play after this. Like, <laughs> same, bro, same. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm like, yo, I was, like, 18, I was like, yo, I can't do that. Fuck that. Yeah, I was like, dude, yo, I, I, I can't do that like that, dude. I'm fucking 18. This guy's just, like, ripping, man. Was Yo, Aaron, how do you think we feel, dude? We're like just like sh- fucking deathcore kids, like coming up, and then like they're always around, but like I can't even get near those guys. It's like we're just playing breakdowns and like you know, yeah. It's it's always it's always the worst. Uh, trying to, uh, yeah, I can't. Like I, I've I've met them so many times, and we've been in the same scene for so long. I just never I like I get like nervous around them and stuff. Sounds uh, to me like there needs to be an Arc Spire Angel Maker tour. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah stay tuned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We actually did try uh, a couple of yeah. years ago, um, and it didn't pan out. I mean, you never know. But those guys are on a, like such a, an extreme level. I'm just like, oh god. Yeah, they are They're very. Sick. It, it's it. They are sick as fuck, man. But so sick. You guys so are sick. also sick as well. Don't discredit sick yourself. Dick. You guys are all sick. Okay. You're you sick. guys are Angel Makers, fucking solid Thank as fuck, man. <laughs> Thank you, man. I like, I like to. Oh, I like to, play, like to play the the breakdowns and stuff. <laughs> Dude, right? <laughs> well, see, that, that's the gonna... thing too. This is like scumfuck. Like it was. I started this to just do like random grindcore, and uh, our new album that we're focusing on is pretty much all like fight riffs. <laughs> yeah. So we went from just oh, like yeah. I was just like I just want to do like random slam riffs and just do a bunch of noises like grindcore bullshit and then it just turned into like yeah let's do some like thrash metal hardcore like fight riffs I don't give a Ooh. fuck now we're t- like we're taking all symphonic bullshit out so you know okay you know, uh, yeah I, I I remember yeah. uh, I like that. that that first show I mixed with you guys I forget what festival it was but it was Voltage Lounge up in Philly. Oh. And like right when we went to sound check, I was just like, "What the fuck? Bro, this is just like absurdly heavy for like." It's on just, the Oceano Jesus. tour, we didn't do any orchestra. We took it all out. Every all the orchestra was gone, so it was just straight. Just 
dang, 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 dang. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, the, the bass that Andrew set up is just so twangy, but so beefy. It's so good, man. Uh, I love it. I, we're working on more stuff, which just sucks. Like, that's what sucked about this whole pandemic thing. It's like, we just got on the the line of it, man. We, we're just coming out and having some fun. And, uh, you know, we obviously know that a lot of people are going to uh, be doing uh, the main tours with all the big guys first. So we're kind of on the back burner of all that. You know what I mean? Scum fucking shit. You know, so. I feel like you could definitely uh, get out there. And, we'll, you know, we'll I, mean, I, I, I wouldn't there. say. It'll happen. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, I I, I well, wouldn't say back burner. I would say for your first tour, you know, not to discredit any of the other bands on the tour at all, but I mean, Scumfuck was the driving force of that tour, and I mean, that's not an opinion. That's just a an, an observation yeah. and a fact. You know what I mean? So like, you guys definitely have the credit, and then you know, with the Infant Annihilator stuff to the side, you know, like, yeah, a lot well, of people I, want to come out to meet you. Specifically, yeah, I always forget because, about you know, stuff like that. I mean, I I never really consider stuff like that because like. Because we don't tour, we don't. Go, I don't go out of my way and uh, like uh, flaunt it, as I, I would say, not like in, in like the a drastic way. Like if you go on, if you're at a show, you are being that guy. You know what I mean? So I've never really had the chance to go to a show and be the guy from Infinite Annihilator. I've only been able to be the guy from Scumfuck. So uh, it, it's weird when I, I go out and go to these shows and everybody's like, oh, yeah, you're that you're that guy, scum, f- fucking uh, Infant Annihilator, blah, blah, blah. And it it's like a whole new world. I don't know. It's different, man. It's really weird. Man, I think What's Scumfuck uh... is like the f- – is I just – I've always loved that name so, yeah. so much. I I've, been getting a, I've gotten a lot of shit from it because of how like it's But either... you knew that going into it. It's well, so it was – well, the thing is, for me, it was, it's like, I, 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 uh, I'm a big G.G. Allen fan, and yeah. uh, I, I was naming it after G.G. Allen and the Scumfuck, so I was just going to name it yeah. Scumfuck. And I never really, <laughs> I never thought I was going to tour with it or really make it even a band, like, that was serious. So yeah. it never really came across to me as, like, it, uh, people looking at it as, like, oh, well, this doesn't sound as professional as so-and-so. So uh, I was just like, you know what, whatever, and then... It, uh, literally, the story is what Waking in the Cadaver came back and started playing, and I said, "I want to." Oh, tour dude! Oh, yeah! <laughs> yeah. I remember and that. That's all I, said. I was just like, <laughs> "Yo, was... Waking's back! I want to tour! <clears throat> I want to play with them again!" No matter what I have to do, if it's in a year or two, whatever it is, Scumfuck, uh, or not even Scumfuck, my band will tour with uh, Waking. So I took the band that was just a little internet bullshit. Scumfuck, we only had like two songs, three songs out, and I made another little EP about it, and uh, yeah, which pretty much just forced us into uh, playing playing live, and it was really fun, man. Like, uh, it's it's just uh, such a different. I I just never anticipated it being a thing. Now I'm in two bands with very unmarketable names. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! I don't even feel good. bad for you. <laughs> yeah, it is what it is, man. <laughs> you know, yeah. I, I'm going to ask while we're on the infant topic. Um, I, I was just on YouTube and I saw this the other day, and it made me think of you naturally. Uh, I saw the fucking Jared Dines Post Malone video, where he like gives Post Malone the infant uh, dude, that was crazy, dude. man. That was Did you know crazy. about that? Like all ahead of time, what? like you had yeah, you, yeah, like, no, me and. Uh, yeah, no, me and Jared were talking for a, a while, and uh, he he was going back and forth just saying that uh, uh, Austin was uh, a fan of mine and shit, and that uh, that he wanted some merch, and if we could get it all signed, it would be sick. And I was like, listen, you know, Aaron and Eddie, they're from the UK. I don't think they can really, like, I, I just didn't line it all up, and I was like, but I can sign this vinyl and just send it to you if you want. And he was like, yeah, that works perfectly fine. So I sent him the vinyl, and uh, I didn't even expect him to make the video of it. Like, I literally was just sending him the vinyl to give to Post and just to be oh. like, yo, here you go, man. Like, it was just, like, such an honor for him to be a fan of mine that I was just like, here you go. And then uh, kind of Jared went out of his way and uh, made the video out of it for uh, – and he sent it to me, and I was just like, dude, oh, my God, that was such, like, an honor for you to even do that. It was, it was so sweet. And, uh, yeah, I mean, 
here when I was, I mean, this is three years ago or so, two, three years ago. Uh, here in post, just be like, bro, fucking thanks, Dickie, for the vinyl. I was just like, what the fuck? Uh, mind, <laughs> mind blown, dude. You know, that's wild. It was crazy. Yeah, that's pretty. That, that's, that's pretty wild, tight. Man. I'm a pretty big post Malone fan myself. Ah, yeah. I think I speak for oh, Aaron yeah. too on that one. Well, at the time, I didn't really know who he was, so I was just like, all right, well, yeah, Post Malone, who's this guy? And then fucking I found out, and I'm like, oh, all right. I can't believe this guy's yeah, actually yeah. a fan of mine. Holy shit. <laughs> but, not, I mean, even just recently, uh, the other day, um, probably about a week or two ago, me and Joe um, from Fit for an Autopsy were in Brendan Urie's stream, and uh, we're bullshitting, and me and Brendan Urie were going back and forth. I joked about it. I was just like, yo, dude, if you want, if you ever want to learn how to do vocals, hit me up. And he was just like, yeah, well, maybe we can trade some things. And it was just like, man, it's so weird to think about, like, who could actually be a fan of your band. You know what I mean? That's the oh. way I think of it. Like, it, I, I get, like, super excited and, like, super, like, fangirl about it because it's just like you never know who, who actually listens to your music. <clears throat> and it's, mm-hmm. it's super sick, man. With with IA, because of how goofy and shit we are, uh, we have been, and I thank Aaron and Eddie for being able to give me the chance to be in the in the band and be goofy like they are, because uh, they're just kind of the masterminds behind it all. Um, it, it, it's really just a, a great opportunity. I mean, it's just it's it's so nice. I I gotta give it all to those two kids, man. They're so talented. You know, you if it was bill, you fit the bill, man. I, I so fit the bill, know. but if it wasn't if it wasn't for those two kids, man, those kids are so talented. Like watching them work is just like it's so weird. I, you learn from it watching him. You know what They're I mean? Talented as hell. Yeah, man, <clears throat> super talented. Yeah, so I'm very thankful to be a, uh, be able to be a part of it, and then be able to you know ha- use the success from IA to build another band. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Nice. So, how did you end up in Brendan Yeri's stream? That was uh, kind of something you just threw in there, and I was like, whoa, what the fuck? <laughs> That's pretty gnarly. Uh, well, uh, so my, uh, I, had, I had just had somebody, ran, one of my boys, one of my mods from my stream, messaged me and was just like, yo, Brandon just watched Blasphemian, and he knows who you are. He's listened to it at a few times, and he loves your vocals. So I jumped in and uh, mm. pretty much jumped in his stream and just said hi and uh he at, ended up uh, his stream was a subscriber stream or subscriber chat and he made me ended up making me a vip so i could just chat as much as i wanted which was pretty fucking cool and just uh yeah, yeah. And him and joe were just going back and forth about vocals and uh yeah he just he watched uh blasphemian and three bastards and knew who i was i, I don't know i mean to me, it blew my mind. Like, I was literally going, because I, I went to my big sister, right? I went to my big sister. Yeah. Fucking Panic at the Disco, My Chemical Romance. When we were children, those were her fucking, her bands. Yeah. And I was just yeah. like, look at this. This motherfucker knows who I am, man. <laughs> and it was crazy, dude. It blew my mind. Like, I, I couldn't believe it. Because, I mean, when it comes down to it, yeah, he might only have... Uh, fucking a thousand people watching him on Twitch, whereas in Twitch, the biggest streamers are on, at, got the 30, 40,000, but it's fucking Brennan Yuri from Panic at the Disco, yeah, dude. Just for the fact that he knows who I am was pretty sick. What a trip. And, uh, yeah, exactly. What a fucking trip. I, I never really thought that, like, when I was a kid, that, uh, like, you could go to my 16-year-old self and be like, yo, Guess who's gonna be a fan of yours? <laughs> I'm gonna. I'll probably just be like, "Fuck you." Yeah. Ain't, 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 ain't having it. Ain't having it. Yeah. You know, and it's just it, it's it's really different, awesome. man. That I mean, it, and that's why I'm super thankful with the the uh, the fans uh, that transferred over to Scumfuck because a lot of there's some people who don't really care about it because it's like a a more tough guy like I want to be hardcore bullshit, but. Uh, uh, a lot of kids have been really nice about it and like me getting on tour and you know everybody going like oh well he can't do it live i can finally prove that stupid shit wrong and mm-hmm. you know 
just something else, man. My my yeah. opinion on that. Yeah, that's what I never really thing. got. It's like, oh, go ahead, Alex. Oh no, I was gonna say that's just something I always thought was funny that I saw because it's like people could have just looked back and seen like abiotic life sets or something, or like even Dealey Plaza from back in the day. Exactly. Like when I mean, you <laughs> used to mix me yeah. back in the day. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like we have like the DNA Lounge. Just throw that up. I might not throw oh, a great yeah. performance oh, up, but my vo my voice. That was great. like v you could like hear me fuck up with tap delay, like learning how to use it that night. <laughs> I know. Dude, that that night was so crazy. interesting. Damn, I forgot about those bro. videos that they put up on that show, dude. Oh my that, god, I'm gonna go rewatch those for sure. Yeah, the DNA yeah. Lounge, bro. That was Brian. Uh, fucking. Uh, Shield? Not Slagle, fucking Shields. Brian Shields, Shields yeah. coming in, fucking giving us dabs and shit. Fucking my man. <laughs> is it, is that the, uh, the Capital baby. Chaos? Much love, Brian <laughs> Shields. Love. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Dude, he was such a VI fucking P, dude. He came up, uh, gave us dabs, and fucking... Uh, that was my first time ever hitting a dab. I, I was just like dying probably, i was, I was probably, that was my first time for sure yeah. probably for me too like an actual dab not something that like my homie made in his fucking garage you know right. but dude that 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 night was so great but it was so weird because i was so fucking baked when we played <laughs> like you could see it in our performance like i couldn't i wasn't moving dude like i didn't do anything like everybody was windmilling and head banging and i was just like i'm baked as fuck dude like, i'm not doing. just like looking for a water just really yeah. cotton mouth doing gutturals just what yeah the fuck? Dude. <laughs> but it worked i guess no yeah it totally worked yeah whatever just, um I'm going to go back to what kind of brought this whole thing about, like, the, the, the question from Andrew and what people have been doing while they're home. I'm going to extend that up to Colin really quick. What have you oh, been yeah. doing outside of your normal practice? Like, any anything new? Anything uh, like... Well, I'm learning how to hack the planet. <laughs> well, um, we may not want to talk about that on stream, you know. Uh, well, I don't know how to do it yet, so it's fine. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but no, I mean, I've been... Um, so my whole backup plan for this, um, for touring anyway, has been um, just retire into being the grumpy old IT guy instead of the grumpy old sound guy. Um, I've been building computers for like, oh shit, I'm old now, uh, like 15 years. Um, built all my own computers and friends' computers and shit like that. Um, and and I've always I've always wanted to um, like have that backup plan in place like just just in case you know you know get injured or or wouldn't be able to tour it again tour again for some yeah, reason wouldn't like, you God fucking know what it? and fucking ear goes out or yeah. something you know yeah exactly it's that's kind of like the only other thing that i would like not uh, that's so let me put it to you this way being being a sound guy front of house guy and overall production dude is oh yeah what up um is is pretty fucking stressful right but it's stress that that we're okay with it's stress that that we enjoy it's we all have good we, we have we have good problems every day you know it's like oh there's this thing that doesn't work but that's a better problem than like not finding anything to eat but anyways i digress um yeah. so the so the backup plan's been fucking studying for all of my uh, CompTIA certifications and becoming um, like way more literate with all that shit taking apart my computer and breaking web pages and stuff like that and kind of uh, going going about that method break it until it works and learn something about it so it's kind of what I've been doing taking a couple classes at the local community college and you know helping out the folks and practicing the shit nice. of an instrument mixing a uh, Helping cool. mix my band's uh, second record um, and re-recording it. Just re-recorded some uh, some more guitars yesterday. Uh, so what that's kind of that? cool. What's that? What band was that? Um, I have a band that I play bass in called Ash and Earth. Um, or Ash and Earth or Ash and Earth? Ash and Earth, uh, a.k.a. Okay, Flaccid okay. Girth. Um, ah. And uh, yeah, we're uh, we're mixing our second record um, that has all of us new faces on it, and it's uh, it's terrible music that I'm sure you guys will hate, um, but you should listen to it anyway. Where can people find it? Um, I think it's, I think it's on Sp the the old stuff is on Spotify. That was like a years and years and years ago. Um, 
Yeah, I've been doing that. I've uh, been helping out. I'm uh, speaking of like all the Twitch stuff um, and podcasting and stuff. Uh, my brother Greg and I have uh, been doing this thing. Like, I've been, he's he's mostly taking control or not control, but like taking like mm-hmm. liberty in making this shit. But he's doing this thing called Tales from a Gear Addict, and you know we've been kind of like traversing the how do you make gear reviews in podcasts with just the gear that you have hmm how how do you make it interesting so we've been fucking around with that like talking to people talking to guests um tristan was on his show um i think i, I was on his show twice um <clears throat> doing some stuff so it's a, it's a lot of fun Review, reviewing gear talking gear talking shop talking shit you know that Very kind nice. of stuff but you know mostly mostly a boring existence Uh, how about uh how about you uh defont uh i'm sure you've been stuck in email world more than you'd like to be but (laughs) not as much as it was when it first started happening (laughs) at first it was just like kind of chaotic yeah it's like well canceling a lot of things kind of rescheduling some stuff and then now it's kind of just dead like no one knows what they want to do or if they want to plan anything or they want me to book anything because they don't know if it's going to reschedule blah 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 um so i, I mean, honestly um what's that no no go ahead oh and then i just been honestly gaming a lot more i started a twitch channel and i'm gonna have like a full setup like next week so i'm gonna dive into that Hell yeah. something i've always wanted to do but i just yeah. never had the time to do it so now nice. I'm gonna do it. Um, yeah, I'm kind of in the same yeah. boat. I'm using my roommate's rig right now. Downstairs, I actually have like this same mic, same same everything almost. But uh, I'm just oh, waiting okay. on like my motherboard and shit. Oh, okay. Well, oh, no, it's fine. Nice. Yeah, building, building. Oh, yeah. yeah, I feel yeah, like it's, it's, it's so like yeah. I, I built my computer about four years ago now, so it. It's it's still doing okay, but it's such an adventure. It's so so rewarding you too. Get, but it's, you get so it's much more horsepower hour with PC, you know. It's, oh yeah, yeah. I was because I was, I was so, so stuck on getting a Mac, but you know, that's what I, I have that. now. But I've got a MacBook that I'm gonna take on tour, <laughs> but I've definitely wanted yeah. my home rig just to be way stronger than I needed it to be for oh, like yeah. a cheap price, which I can do with PC quite you know pretty easily. Oh yeah, you can. Um, so uh, another question I want to ask Dan, just while I'm kind of asking new stuff. Um, so you, you you put on like a metal festival tour that uh, I've been fortunate enough to work on once with Cryptopsy, uh, Devastation of the Na- or on the Nation, excuse me, um, <laughs> and that got rescheduled to next year. Um, yeah. Do you want to kind of tell everyone just kind of like what it what that's like, like in the sense of booking the entire tour, mm-hmm. like that that's your tour, you know what I mean? Yeah. In the sense of devastation of the nation like just kind of maybe enlighten us what you know how difficult it is rescheduling an entire tour full of international <laughs> artists yeah i mean it's yeah it's three out of five bands that are international rotting christ um fork nagar and wolfheart what was crazy was i thought it was going to be just a headache and at first we were talking about just rescheduling it to the fall and then right um, I think it was, I think it was Rod and Christ or Wolfheart couldn't do that or something. They had other plans, so I was just like, well, why don't we just do it in like February, March? Then just fuck it, we'll just move it to February, March. The tour will end like a few days before your visas expire, and I, I'm sure I can get this whole thing rebooked real quick because all these venues probably don't even have. Maybe a few of them have some holds or whatever, but I think I can get this done quickly and like. When you're dealing with bands like from Europe and stuff, there some can be like pretty slow with responding, and you got to kind of stay on them. But it was like really quick, and like in 24 hours, I had responses from everybody being like, "Yeah, let's do those dates. You know, same route. Uh, try to do the same venues, and then uh, let's do those dates." So I was like, "All right, cool." And then I just went back to all the promoters, emailed them all right away, and I'm like, "I know shit's crazy right now." but I want to get this done now. So can you let me know if this date's available? And all of them got back to me like real fucking quick. And majority, I got everything done in like, what, it was like a day or two, uh, two days or something. And then um, all the same venues. And that, well, hopefully they'll all be the same venues. And then um, 
yeah, just redid it all and then just reannounced in like a week, a week after that or something. And it was crazy. I mean, I'm hoping everything will happen as it is because I would hate for it to be canceled. A lot of work went into this tour. I mean, you know, Bork Nagar is a band that hasn't been here in like 20 something years, 21 years. So, yeah, it's crazy. And the last time they were here was in 99 with um, Emperor. Damn. So, wow. Yeah. Goodness. So. It's like, you know, rotting crust. I was looking forward to that years. tour. Yeah. I really hope it goes through. Yeah. I, I was going to attend for sure. Yeah. Good. And this is this is Wolfhart's, what, second time in the United States? Second or third. I think it's the third. <laughs> it would be their third. Yeah. It, it would end up being their third. So, yeah. Right. And they just came out with a new record, too. Yeah. It's fucking sweet. It's yeah. It's great. So, it's, you know, and Abigail Williams released their best record, in my opinion, that everyone loves. And, and just, yeah. So, I'm hoping it'll happen. But, it honestly, what it wasn't a big headache at all to reschedule at all, like surprisingly. <laughs> yeah, it's a yeah, uh, yeah. I was gonna say I'm kind of surprised. I think it would have been. Stuff. Yeah, our our confirmed date like changed. I, I noticed that was like one of the first ones to get reconfirmed on our end, like and and get a yeah. new date for March of next year. Yeah. So yeah, yeah it's pretty um, snappy. It's kind of like if, the, if I may ask, without like any band names, what's like the earliest date you have booked for any of like? Do you think anything this year is feasible? You know what I mean? Like um, it's hard to tell right now, only being halfway through the year. But yeah, I know. I mean, there's like a few bands like on, on a smaller scale, like bands that do like fifty to a hundred people show that do want to do. You know, and there's there's one that will do a little bit more than that, like probably one fifty. But they want to do some stuff in the fall. Like I'm suggesting, like November. Yeah, do you think? You know, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I want to say November, December is the yeah. next tentative thing on my roster or schedule. Yeah, and yeah. I so, just don't even know crazy. how realistic that is. But yeah, we haven't like yeah. booked it yet. We're still like talking about it. Um, like a few bands, probably like five or six bands, different bands that want to do things, and um, we'll see. I mean, it's it's weird right now, and I'm trying to like talk to other people, you know, agents and stuff about doing you know next year. You know, there's something even with like Angel Maker that we had a tour planned for August, September. Yeah. And it just got, you know, I talked to the other band on the tour, their manager. I was like, what do you think? And he's like, let's just push this thing. Let's just, before we announce it and waste our time announcing this yeah. thing, there's no point, you know. So we'll probably end up do the, doing, you know, hopefully doing that sometime early next year. I would like to. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Pushing it uh, or having it not announced <laughs> made it a lot. A lot better, like less disappointment for everyone, you know. Yeah. It's not yeah. like it, it doesn't feel real, and and it's just, uh, yeah, just looking, yeah. looking, looking forward, really, and and kind of just putting a putting a pin in it, really. I think for a lot of things in life, um, you know, just putting a pin in it, and you know, it's it. doing your best. And, yeah, you know. I'm just hoping, you know, definitely, you know, things really start to pick up next year, and things start to turn around. Absolutely. Uh, certainly. And second shout out to Ian. Uh, he said, I'll TM that rig if nothing conflicts still, Defonis. Oh, yes. <laughs> you will have to because Bryce's Lucian's probably not going to tour anymore. I miss Bryce we'll so bad. Yeah. Play with the rings. I was going to say, I was going to say, if Ian can't probably. do it, I'll do it. But chances are, if Ian can't do it, that's All where I'll be. So. It. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't pay you. Um, all right let's cut the shit let's talk money let's um i'll do it all right i'm gonna move on to that just all the way back to uh andrew's question of of, you know just what everyone's been doing and stuff um aaron like what have you been doing outside of drums have you picked up any crazy new hobbies or have you just been Uh, focusing on a lot more of your playing um yeah, I mean, I've been playing drums a lot, been recording and filming stuff more often than I do. Um, but outside of drums, um, well, I've been I've been singing for like two years, and I would definitely say that like being home from the last tour and not having anything going on as far as tour wise, like I've I've put a lot of focus on that. Um, so I've been like singing and like taking lessons and like um, teaching myself how to like sing uh, and play drums at the same time. Um, so that's been a lot of fun. I always like have wanted to learn another instrument and I feel like, I don't know, especially with playing extreme metal, like 
I take care of my hands and my body, but like I have I have tendonitis in my right hand, and it's like any other instrument that I would learn, you know, like if my like if if my wrist or whatever gets so affected to where I can't play drums, it's not like I'd be able to play guitar or bass or piano or whatever either. And so voice just kind of seemed to be like the natural thing to go to because it's like I'm not using any other part of my body anyway. Um, so that's, that's been a lot of fun man. getting getting good at, at doing vocals and like you know learning a melodic instrument. Um, I've been enjoying are that you, a lot. Are you doing like I'm, strictly uh-huh. clean singing, or are you are you learning like some of the metal growls too? Or are you doing like strictly clean? I do so like I I mean I, I know how to do fries and like Andrew will no sorry not yeah yeah, yeah fries. And Andrew will like show me, you know, like give me pointers and stuff. But I don't really nice. practice or get into it as much as just like the clean singing stuff. Yeah, it's mostly just singing. Yeah. Now, Aaron, no, though, you, you do have you have a legendary hardcore shout. <laughs> oh, do I? A hardcore shout? What is that? <laughs> Absolutely. Like the what? The, um, oh, the way oh, of the like dying. <laughs> yeah. Oh <laughs> man. The I do is the <laughs> part. Yeah. That was yeah. that was my wake up call like every day in summer slaughter like oh shit it's time to party all right <laughs> Get up. oh yeah when I was drunk and annoying everybody yeah, sure. <laughs> that was really fun I, I had a lot of fun this last summer slaughter I, I really like um dude this summer slaughter was like one of the most fun tours I've ever done and it wasn't even yeah, like the biggest summer tour slaughter I've ever done. 2019 it was. Just, like, so it was just like homey fast. It was like there, there oh wasn't a God. single band on the bill. Well, I guess Brand. I didn't know Brand beforehand, but like we all buddied up with Brand of Sacrifice very quick. I mean, you know. yeah, that that was so fun. That was by far one of my most favorite tours I've ever done in my life. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Except that um, I, I guess like last was year. Was what did you say, Aaron? Oh, I was just saying last year I had some of like my favorite tours ever. Like Summer Slaughter was really sick and doing like Japan and Australia back to back was really crazy. I just like got really lucky with like some of the most fun tours I've ever done and then this year it's just like <laughs> it's like, All right, your fun's over, it's time to it's time to stay home. <laughs> yeah, it had to even you out. You had a real busy year last year, just with some of like the, the spot gigs and even filling in for Board of Osiris last minute and stuff, you know. Yeah, you, uh, I just ran cool. last year. Yeah, no, it was cool. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, you, you definitely had an interesting year, and um, I guess the tour gods are take a thing away now. <laughs> yeah. Give it, they take, take it away. away. Yeah. Give it. Um, Have you had Jason on here yet? Yeah. Um, Jason and John were part yeah. of episode two. Good. The, oh it was God. actually a great episode. I I loved it. It was it was a lot of fun. I actually really like these band uh, and like music industry episodes kind of uh, a lot. I'm not gonna say more uh, than you know doing like the like for example I had Eric Rowe and Joseph Rudd on and then Ray Low Black yeah, yeah. the other week the porn star and like shit like that's really fun. But uh, I can't quite sit down and relate on a level like we can. You know what that's I mean? Real. Like yeah, just yeah. from. Uh, yeah. The days, weeks, months, whatever have you spent on the road together, etc. Yeah. Um, so I guess I'm going to direct this question towards Dicky and Defont. Um, do you guys ever get the itch? Um, say this wasn't the pandemic, just to like get out there and tour. You know what I mean? Because uh, I know Scumfuck was just on the rise to come up and tour. I did you guys this first tour? Um, and then Defonce, I know you're booking agent, so you're usually home. Do you guys ever, yeah. you know, get the itch to get out? Um, oh yeah. I feel like Dicky does more than me. I don't really get it anymore. Well, like some, I, what a, yeah. I, I get I just <laughs> I wanna be out all the time. You kidding me, dude? <laughs> I'm like a homebody now. I like going <laughs> out. Like when my friends are in town, I'm definitely down to hang and fucking do whatever, party and shit, but I like being home. So it's not like I've been kind of going a little insane, but at points because I want to go see my friends. But and uh, I've been uh, just pretty much riding around uh, with uh, a few buddies on our motorcycles and shit. That's tight. And, which is social distancing, it I is. guess, if you want to call it. Yeah, you that's know? fair. I mean, it is. You're yeah, riding. I mean, yeah. That, that's that's tough, how dude. we've gotten away with it and not yeah. gotten in trouble by everybody. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> no, uh, I me and my dad, my dad just bought a Harley a while ago, so we, that's what we we've been doing really is just riding around like uh, between Twitch and um, riding bikes, 
Oh, uh, that's all I've really been doing. I mean, that's how I've been getting out. Yeah. And, you know. Been... Yeah. Well, uh, we've got another question from uh, Andrew Beard over on Twitch. Um, what's the first thing you'll want to do once the quarantine's, uh, you know, finalized and uplifted? And uh, now we can start seeing uh, other people, et cetera, et cetera. I guess we'll start. Uh, let's start with Kyle. I haven't heard from, from you in a minute. What's one yeah, of the first so things Kyle. you're going to do? Kyle, once it's lifted? Once yeah, it's lifted. once you can go back and just, you know, once once everything no is more. back to normal, so to say, <laughs> you know, so to say. Well, I'm hoping to God that our tour with Fit for a King, Silent Planet, and Alpha Wolf in Europe Still goes. is going to be a thing in October and yeah. November. Yeah. That would be sick. Um, right now it's looking like our record, uh, will be coming out around that time as well. So it would be optimal that tours start up again at that time. You know, I'm, I'm trying to be realistic and I'm not getting my hopes up about that, but hopefully I'll be touring at that. Point. Yeah. It's, it's kind of hard to find the middle line of like looking for positivity and like also, like looking at reality and seeing how realistic it is for things to go back to normal. I See just how know right, dude? The government here in in uh, Ontario, Canada, is just starting to allow curbside pickup from some businesses. So wow. I don't know how it is. They're in just other starting places. to do that. So, yeah, same with California. Uh, well, I'm at a Georgia dude. They're doing takeout booze. Like you can go to a Mexican oh, yeah. spot and buy a gallon of margaritas. Oh, you know what I mean? Like, I'm in Florida, bitches. The beaches are open. Let's let's party. I don't know what to tell you guys. We can party right now. <laughs> Florida don't give a fucking shit, dude. We don't give a. Don't fuck. you guys got beaches you and shit? Right beaches now? are open, dude. Yeah. Restaurants, bar. The bar should be open soon enough. Lord of Man they strikes they again. Got, like lower <laughs> amount of cases. I'm just talking shit. Dude, right now. I could be wrong. I but... love fucking living in Florida. It's hilarious. This place is just a, <laughs> it, it's just so awesome, dude. Every day. I, I'm not gonna such lie. A... I I, uh, I miss living in South Florida. Granted, where dude, I was was so you know pretty good. different from where you're at, just due to Miami being Miami. But dude, I, I stay I I stay at home a lot, but going out is always just such a trip. I gotta say that, dude. You never know what you're gonna run into. I went up. You, you really do. I remember it was just really funny. You know that liquor store up the street from Tyler and Dave's? Uh, oh, the Lucky Seven? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We went up there and, uh, you know, we just landed coming back from Europe or whatever. I think we were just getting some claws and, you know, like nicotine, like little pods and shit. And it was just such a stereotypical, like, Okay. Yep. Yep. I'm back in yep. South Florida. This is this is Swamp Town right here. I know it's exactly. Yeah, it's like a barrier, dude. Got. When you go into Florida, it's like a barrier surrounding Florida. You go through. You're like, boom. It's like, <laughs> like, oh, it's like I got <laughs> off the plane and I felt the air, and I was like, yep, yep. Here we are. In my town specifically, is like Florida as fuck too like <laughs> where do you live you're gonna go to one moment where it's like super nice and you're like oh yeah i'm in a great area and then you're gonna turn left and you go oh no Crack. no this guy drinking a white dragon and uh <laughs> oh probably you're uh, in a, shooting up damn you're in cape right cape? yeah I yeah. yeah i love it dude it's so good, dude. Cape Coral, Fort Myers. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. This shit. It's so much fun. Every day. I don't I'm give a good. shit. That that was definitely one of my favorite airports I've ever flown into internationally. Flying into Fort Myers was like super Dude. easy, so that was fun. Great airport, I love it. I've gotten drunk yeah, that was at convenient their uh, as all Applebee's hell. all day, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and two for Tuesday. Well, you, you heard it here first, everybody. <laughs> yep. Getting drunk at uh, the Fort Miles Applebee's. You know, <laughs> Club A. Um, Club A. Club A. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be a bunch of deathcore kids showing up there just looking for you now. Yep. Yeah. Uh, fuck. Yeah, whatever, whatever, whatever. You heard it here first. If you want to find him, go to the Fort Myers International Airport and go to that Applebee's. <laughs> yeah. Take I'll be right way. there. Apples to apples. It I'm just the strokes the ego to play you know, to pay twice as much for the drinks. You know, it feels nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> dude, oh my god. Imagine being that guy. Dude, I want to pay full price. Why? Because I can. <laughs> like, bruh, what? <laughs> Get out of here. That's what I do. Um, full price. Get out of here. I'm walking here. I'm um, walking here, guy. All right. Um, this one's a uh, um, an out there-ish question. Feel free not to answer, but um, we're gonna Hello. hit both ends of the spectrum. Uh, I want to go around. What's everyone's least favorite tour moment, or like biggest moment on tour? Where you know, just kind of like a fuck. What the fuck am I doing here? I think, kind of moment. That's pretty easy. That one's pretty easy for me. I, I, I think I have. Yeah, I got a bunch. Just van, like van, like any, there's been a lot, but you know, just van shit. Like whenever yeah. anything goes wrong, driving, you know, because that's like just like one. Yeah, it's got to be because yeah, that could be like lives at risk at like certain times. Like I remember this one time, it was our first U.S. tour ever, and uh, we were following uh, one of the other bands. It was Falsifier, and um. We ended up going through a mountain pass, which was just not a great <laughs> idea. In uh, it was October, so there was a ton of snow, and you know oh uh, we like straight up almost died that night. I was driving and pulling gnarly drifts, and you know almost flipping the trailer, <laughs> that kind of stuff, and like you know breaking Careful down. Yeah. <laughs> so much that's fun. Oh, no dude. Good. Yeah, it like that. Anything like that. That's when you're kind of just like, is my life driving. worth Bro, this? Like, I is my life, Alex. my yeah. life worth? But like, is playing oh breakdowns God. worth just dying over? And you know, <laughs> kind of. But you know, actually, yeah. But um, oh but sometimes that's like, you know, that that's the only time I think that is like, is this worth it? Like, you know, because you can be going through some shit, or you don't have a good show, or you're hungover as fuck, mm-hmm. or like, you know, you play a shitty show, like, wah wah wah. Like when lives are at risk, or like when the, your your homies' lives are at risk. Yeah. Like, you know, I was driving. Like, I'm going like, dude, what if I kill all my fucking dudes? No, I feel like, that, that's, dude. That that's like that's the yeah. worst feeling. It's like I, is like yeah. I had one yeah, night the with uh with I mean Alex and Aaron were there. They know. I don't know you guys. Uh, I yeah. couldn't sleep for a week. <laughs> I, oh my God. I, I fell asleep I and drove did. off the road. Yeah. And and ow, oh, dude. Like oh, I was I was wide wide. I drove. Dude, I bro I drove for like four hours after that because Whoa. I had how much adrenaline I had going through me. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> Dude, I, I remember I being the on the I'm first like, ah! Oh my god. I Dude, remember being I, on that was... first row of benches and I just looked up and all I saw was trees. <laughs> oh <laughs> my god. Dude, Fuck it was bad. It, it, it was, I, I was uh, uh I was only like eighteen. Eighteen, nineteen. We all it was were. like one of well, our I mean, first we were, Yeah, really? we all were, yeah, yeah. It was like one of our first tours, so I just like the, being on the road. I didn't think about it, and then I had uh, what? What the problem was is I had fucking uh, cruise control on, which is a reason why I just don't use it anymore. Yeah, because you never, never know. That. Yeah, I just yeah, don't do it. It, it makes things a little too casual. Dude, sometimes. it's satisfying to not have to sit there and have your pedal, uh, your your foot to the pedal. But if it's not during the daytime, Ooh, I wouldn't do it. Yeah, yeah, man. And yeah, that's uh, actually a great rule. Yeah, I know. Oh, yeah. That, uh, tour tip number one. I don't know if you've had any tour tips, <laughs> but uh, tour tip number one. I, th- I think don't that actually is control. tour tip number one. Yeah, don't so. use cruise control if, if it's no, late at I night. And, uh, you might fall asleep. Yeah. Because as yeah. long if you fall asleep, at least you'll fucking let go, you know? Exactly. But I, Slow yeah, down a I little had, bit. I, I, it, it was sense. crazy, yeah. man. It was crazy. I don't know. Yeah, something I just else. remember that. Matt just like clinging on to the seatbelt, and it was just like shit, 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 shit. shit oh my shit, god! Shit, 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 shit. That yeah. was like a running joke for him and I for months. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I can yeah, shout I out to those guys if they're out. watching. I yeah. miss them. Yeah, yeah. I, have a, I, yeah. I miss them so much too. God, fucking we John, dude. Matt, John, and Beth Weezy. Oh my god, I love them. We- we have some bunks in the back of our of our van, and uh, so there's the middle level, and it's like a coffin in there. Uh, you can fit two. Me and Casey are normally the ones who sleep in there because we're the ones that drive for the most part. Um, so uh, 
and then there's the upper bunk mike is up there with cole with a so we're in like a coffin when we're sleeping in there and only once in a rare while we'll both be in there because we're always driving i'll do the days casey will do the nights because casey doesn't party as much and, and drink as much as everyone else likes to and um it was two tours ago i think this is on the oceano run or yeah yeah it was last year and uh Matt was going to be driving from around 3 a.m. until he couldn't go any longer. Um, so he was sleeping, and Casey had to go to bed. Casey came into the coffin with me. So we're in the coffin. It's just pitch black, uh, you know, and you have about uh, half a foot of clearance from your face to, like, the roof of the bunk. And wow. um, and it was just, you know, having I was having a peaceful sleep. I remember Casey coming in uh, five or five or so in the morning you know it's cold um casey gets in and i'm just like oh hey but fall back asleep <laughs> and then next thing next thing i woke up to was just oh. and so i'm just and, and i don't know what the fuck is going on and there's a little bit there's only a tiny bit of light that actually creeps in but i remember looking <laughs> and casey's awake and i i just i just woke up and we're shaking we're flying around and i'm like looking at him and i was just like is that like is this is it like, <laughs> like, like, like my dad. And, and he had that like his face also was like this ah! this is it this and, is how it's and, gonna and, happen and, yeah matt matt was driving oh. and he had he had jackknifed the trailer and a bunch of snow that oh, we randomly no. hit oh. and uh the trailer sw- swept around and actually crushed the side of the van like ooh, bam and my head was was right there so there's like a big thud and you know we're grabbing on under this fucking thing and uh yeah oh, not man, not dude. it just yeah but it, it's been insane yeah and that's yeah. why angel maker does not like the tour in the winter yeah. we don't yeah. right, we have, Canadian like, that's the one thing you guys told me no winter. yeah yeah that's fine <laughs> I can't argue it. <laughs> it's banned. Man. Winter, Winter like, is no banned. January. That's it. January, yeah. no November. Uh, yeah. and on uh, December. Um but yeah. <laughs> we don't we don't do winter. It's it's so dangerous, man. And we don't we don't have I mean, a lot of people don't have professional drivers. We drive ourselves. Uh, we, you know, we always come prep chains. I got you a driver, uh, man. My dad, he'll he'll <laughs> kill it. Man. Oh <laughs> it's get big dick in the cockpit. <sighs> yeah, yeah, you get big dick in the cockpit, dude. You, he's fucking. He's gonna handle that shit. <laughs> I would love to have a fatherly. Oh I mean, Kate, you know, a fatherly figure in the cockpit would make me feel a little bit better about it. Yeah, maybe right. Oh, uh, fucking with my uh, dad. For your father. <laughs> you, know? for your fa- you didn't go get it for your father? <laughs> oh, oh, dude. God. My dad is something fucking else. I'll tell you that. And I want to meet that dad. Yeah, you, yeah, you would. Honestly, you that's do. like the, that's the dad definitely the think. only tour I've done where <laughs> someone's brought their dad out. And <laughs> that was cool. <laughs> yeah, dude. Come on, man. My fucking dad just wants to sit there and party as much as I do. I don't give a shit. He's just kind of a little bit I mean, more of a puss about it. You yeah. know? He's just like, what? I gotta sleep on the floor? I'm like, yeah, dude. We, we're sleeping on the fucking floor. That's where There's a hotel, man. <laughs> you want to sleep yeah. here? You wanna... <laughs> well, yeah. He was the guy. So what hotel are we going to? We can't afford it. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Like Unless yeah, dude. Talk, like bro. we're getting paid. Like we're fucking the opener, bro. We can't get a, a hotel every single night, man. You might be fifty <laughs> fucking two, but we're sleeping in the van. That's it. Shit. <laughs> dude, going back to hotels, I don't even think we got a hotel for like any of those abiotic tours. No, God no. Dude, oh my maybe god. Maybe like one once, maybe. No. No, I can't really we ever got one. One. I don't yeah. think we got one. I, I, dude. I think I think I'd have to go to Matos and ask, but I'm I'm like ninety nine percent sure I don't think we ever got a hotel. I'm not hundred percent sure we never got a hotel. Yeah. Not even not even like a thirty dollar one. No way, dude. <laughs> no, dude. We, we were we, straight like we sleeping slept bag at fan, motherfucking houses as oh, much as we that. could. Yeah, yeah. I guess. yeah we, we, we ended up in some very weird spots. Of, yeah. Remember the the one guy that had the fucking uh, like skate park behind his house? 
Oh, what the fuck? Richie, had... Richie Pennington in Dallas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dallas. He has a skate park behind his house. Yeah, he, uh, he used to have like a big fucking half pipe and some like quarter pipe oh, stuff wow. back there. Damn. <laughs> Shout out uh, Richie hey, if you're watching. Yeah, Richie's the man. Well, well uh, apparently I remember you, Kendrick Richie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Aaron, Aaron uh, what'd you say? Weird, weird. Speaking of weird places to stay, um, you want to tell the uh, the move out story? Move out story. Oh. <laughs> oh fuck. Yeah. Tell that one You're on the spot. Um, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'll totally, totally tell this story. Yeah, um, <laughs> let me just take a sip of this water. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think y'all were go. calling me out earlier. I just went down and, and got some tequila, so there's my liquor. There you go. I held up my end of the party. There you go. There you go. Nice. Bud. Cheers. Um, so yeah, this was. Cheers. Um, this was a few years back uh, on a Rings of Saturn tour. We stayed Ooh, with some gosh. fans, um, which I think most of us don't do anymore. That's in this chat. Um, anyways, um, yeah, it's not really stayed with some uh, really <laughs> weird, uh, really cool, weird man. fans. Yeah, and um, we get weird? there. It's set up very weird. It's an apartment with maybe like two or three blow up mattresses. Which just fine. We're not judging on really aesthetics right when we walk in. You know, like we're just trying to rest our heads so we can get up and, you know, yeah. go do the gig next day. But um, then we, when we get there, we notice that one of the people is on their hands and knees spraying perfume all over the carpet. And then we're like, what's going on there? And they're like, oh, sorry, there's piss all over the carpet. So that's like the first thing we walk into. Um, oh, and it's, it's like everywhere. I know this one too. And then, I know yeah. This one. And kind then, uh, oh, high fives all around. Um, Human? Hell, there's so many different ways to go I, about this. I don't this know story. where, who's, uh, who's high fiving? Boom. Um, <laughs> so, anyways, we get there, whatever. We get the bed stuff situated, and uh, Aaron and I had plans to um, split one of the blow up mattresses. And then at one point, one of, one of the um, people having us over. Um, was like, well, I'll just sleep in the middle of you two. And uh, we were definitely not too uh, keen on that. And uh, it just, like, it got into a really weird scenario. The person, it was a male and a female. They they were in a relationship or something and started arguing, oh, uh, calling each yeah, calling each other crazy, um, embarrassing names that you would never do in front of people. Nonetheless, oh. bands that you're a so-called fan of that you're trying to like have over and dare I say impress and like have over. <laughs> Screw it, right? I, I, I use that Screw term it. very lightly. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, I don't know. Uh, that, anywho, I don't know what kind of life I was living. They got it. They got it made. Fuck it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And then, anyways, they're, like, screaming at each other, blah, blah, blah. And then at one point, one of them looks over and is like, by the way, are you thirsty? We have red wine and milk. And uh, so, you know, there was red wine and there was red wine and milk. Uh, and milk. And then, anyways, oh, yeah. <laughs> and then so bad. We, we, we managed to go to sleep, you know, without the punisherness going too far uh Yeah. You know, too far past it already was. And then we wake up to a very blatant cop knock. Everyone knows a cop <laughs> knock. They're distinct, you know. And um, anyways, they were, and you know, at this point, there were like dab rigs out, like glass, like bottles of booze, and you know, shit. Um, oh, fucking just, milk, just dude. shit. You know what milk. I mean? Just stuff milk, out. shit, shit everywhere. Just around yeah, here. you know. And uh, so the this guy comes up, and you know, they're apparently getting evicted. Oh and, my god. You know, yeah, uh, apparently, you know, I, I guess that they had known <laughs> about it because that's why all the furniture was out. Uh, <laughs> and, I remember this story. God, and, so and then they get really, really, really yeah. mad. Um, I think specifically um, because wow. we didn't help them move out remaining furniture. And like there was like another couch or something. And they were like expecting us to move all their shit like into some so moving yeah. truck. How dare you? <laughs> Wow. How, how they dare. offered you milk, man. <laughs> <laughs> Can we focus? Oh. All right. Wait. Yeah. They Can offered you that? milk, man. Aaron, fill in <laughs> no. any blanks that I may have missed. I'm sure I missed Please. some. They were all well, pretty, yeah. Uh, I 
pretty you, on point. You I think got it all on the mark. I think the blink that I that uh, you did miss though was the fact that after the cop knock, um, she asked you to get the door. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You yeah. did yeah. tell me that. You well, did that tell me that. We weren't even going to open it. She was like, hey, well, well, what if you guys open the door for us? And we were like, no, we're not going to open no. your cop knock door. <laughs> <laughs> your cop knock door. <laughs> <laughs> That's your cop. That's not my cop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. Not for me. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, That's that 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 hell, man. <laughs> You never know who you're going to run di- run into, you know? Yeah, that's it. And that chick right. still follows us around, dude. Like, she Just still... Will be oh, no. We, we don't have to say it. any names. We all know. There's no who names. It There's is. no names. Yeah. <laughs> There's no names. Everybody Just, in the yeah, mental community awesome, can right? go, yeah, yeah, know her. Yeah, no, I know. Yeah, yeah know her. Yeah. yeah, I know. Yep, that, that's a girl. Oh shit! And it's like, you know, it's, it's not even anything personal. It's not even anything personal. But, you know, that was just not a good first impression. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna put something in this uh, chat amongst us really quick. I already did. Okay. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> oh shit! I don't give a fuck, yeah. dude. <laughs> well, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> what's the point of getting up? <laughs> what, 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 what's the point? Oh, my Ooh, anyways, that was just one of the more wild <laughs> tour <laughs> story. <laughs> one of the mo- more wild ones. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait. Oh. <laughs> Oh fuck! <laughs> that oh my god! Okay. Oh, fuck <laughs> Christ! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Do you see so this? Bright. I think this is a tear. Do you see this? Can you see this? <laughs> <laughs> if I can zoom in. Uh, you can't write this shit, boy. Yeah. <laughs> this is, uh, uh, we'll, we'll edit this part out later before we, you know, publish this video. What? No. Uh, Larry Flakes? Uh, you can fix this in post, mate. <laughs> not live. Yeah, it's not live. It, we can fix it later. Easy. This easy. is what I should have been in uh, the whole time. I don't know. Wow, why. okay. Well, anyway. I've never seen Dickie the zoomed in. <laughs> Yeah, I like I like the zoom um, right now. You can really see your mustache. <laughs> <in this room. laughs> yeah. Did you just drool, Dickie? Yeah, you just drool. I did a little Check bit. Yeah. You like Look what at you this. see? You can see my my white hairs. Your white hairs. Yo, I found a white hey, pube man, today. I can't grow a beard, all right? So I got yeah, white hairs. Dude, Wait you got a the minute. Same thing going on. I What's can't do anything up? over there. Like it's the same. It's, it's so yeah, bad, dude. What? Well, we're, we we got stuck on this pirate journey where it's just the <laughs> shit mustache and terrible goat uh, goatee. That's it. Yeah. Whatever. Pirate mustache. I, don't care. I can't even grow a stash, I have to justify bro. it somehow. Mm-hmm. I mean, come on. Yeah. Whatever. All right. Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm I'm, yeah. I'm yeah. recovering over here. I'm still recovering. Um, What's no, next? Like What's break. next? What's I next? think this is the first episode that I've had implemented piss breaks, and I kind of like it. Yeah, too. We're going on. We have been going for we're going for two minute. hours. Bro, yeah. Oh, yeah. we just I, hit the two hours. Do you hour really mark. think you can get me two hours without going and taking a piss? Yeah. What I, What are I you talking like about, dude? Twenty minutes, dude. I, I pissed twice. Too I long. got. Uh, yeah. I'm literally gonna go pee again. I have to do it. (laughs) (laughs) I I got a solid 12 pack still just chilling, bud. 12 pack? Uh, I might have to go get another beer. I'm not gonna lie, cracking a cold one right now sounds kind of (laughs) alright. Oh, I know it does. I know it does. Cracking a nice ice cold water. Sorry, that That water, baby. Um, the maybe ideas. even a nice Perrier. A Perrier. That's what I fuck with, dude. Alright, it's the Earth. 
<laughs> wow. Okay. Well, um, I'm just going to acknowledge this really quick. The Twitch chat is going off crazy right now. You guys are crazy, and that is all I Wait, will say. I, I don't really know how loud I am to you guys, too. I'm you're sorry good. if you're, I am uh, you're, dead. You're coming you're, in at a good level. Your gain structure is just fine, Diggy. It's great. Thank you. I think it's Alex, setting it right. I think it's I, setting right at Unity. I, I, I would hey. hope that you. I, I would hope that you and Alex know that uh, my thresholds are very tight right now. Very nice. My Aww. yeah. My gain reduction Threshold. is very tight right now. Cute. <laughs> Look at that. You hear that? You hear that? And there's no like loud, like whispers. You know. Front of house over here, guy. Hey, you know, hey, I don't have bed. Alex's skills. I don't know what's going on under the how, bed. How are you that guy and then uh, have, like, what <sighs> What are you using? A Sennheiser, whatever the fuck, from Walmart? Hey, you know, from I got... I get, uh, it's it's flipped <laughs> over. You know, I'm hiding the switch. You know? <laughs> yeah, the, the switch. The switch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Come on, you know. man. This is this is, this is my my Amazon guy. my Amazon special mic arm that was uh you know pulled out of some dumpster somewhere. It was sick. Bro, I I know I bought that one. It's uh twelve bucks. I know Fuck it yeah, from it Amazon. I know it. I know the exact arm you got, bud. Twelve twelve bucks, and I I paid I paid exactly free ninety nine for it. Yeah, that that must be the two thousand seven Sennheiser whatever the fuck, <laughs> and it's gonna be perfect. Oh, Holy, fuck. Holy shit! It actually is the whatever the fuck. Yeah. Is that the that? is that the E nine thirty five? That's that's the E nine uh, uh the E nine whatever the fuck. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. No, you're good. You're good. I mean, you used to sound great, like an angel. I mean, like an angel. Um, oh, <laughs> yo, how many of you guys actually? <laughs> Just no, just notice this right now. I have, I still have, uh, like old tour monies here. How many of you guys keep your 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 foreign currency? Oh, I keep a lot of it. <laughs> Dude, I got my pesos. I got my fucking yen. I got my euros. <laughs> Like, I'm crying, dude. I'm, I'm literally, I have tears in my eyes. What is happening? Yo. Yo. Oh, Where do we no. go from here? Okay, I'm my diaphragm is activated. We go from, uh, go to a cat. And a bottle of wine, apparently. <laughs> Look how cute it is. Where's mine? Hold on, hold on. That's, Let me see if I can get a good zoom. Stage. Yeah, I can get a good zoom. <laughs> a cat and a bottle of wine. <laughs> uh, tear? Uh, is that a legit tear, uh, Alex? <laughs> What's up, bud? What kind of bottle of wine you got there? I got some of the stuff <laughs> yeah. I've been fermenting. I got uh, I got, I got some of the, the elderflower stuff I, I had been fermenting. I, uh... Uh, it's wine, it's wine o'clock. Oh, and, and guys, this is Pippin. This is my kitty. Okay, kitties. <laughs> Love it. Pippin. Yo. Pippin. And the uh, God, all right. So what so, now? I don't know, um, dude. Alex, it's Wait, not am I still on camera? We need direction here. We're going Get off the rails. Yeah. 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 Host, what, are what are we doing? Question. It's Get Sunday. What are we doing? Oh, I think. All right, let's. Yeah. Okay, right. we're back. <laughs> you're you're we're bad. Back. You're you guys are bad dungeon masters. Oh, this this oh, we bad. playing we playing D and D right here. Bad. I'm a oh, bad. Yo, this is like... this is absurd. Um, okay. Yeah, we're let's back. do that Andrew question, Alex. Oh, what yes, are we doing? Um, yeah. Yeah. What 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 is that last like, one? Let me go on Twitch on and look. Yeah. Dude, bro, I I'm on Twitch right now. All right. I'm Hopefully a quick one. Stunned. Okay. Yeah, that's a good one. I like this one. Here, here's the last <laughs> question. Uh, I, I have something called quarantine cravings. Name three types of food you're craving the most while being stuck at home. Donair. Yeah, certainly. What um, is it? Halifax Donair, Donair. though. Uh, there's Gar? a wrong place back uh, close to my place. Uh, 
ramen ramen spot that I'm really craving. Dude, I love um, ramen. just I bar miss food. Ramen. I miss that. I miss going and getting shitty wings and shitty tacos from shitty bars. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I miss it so much. I'm not even fucking joking, dude. I miss it so much, dude. Like the wings I would get from the bar that I went to. Mm-hmm. Nothing beats it right now. If I could go back, oh the tacos, oh, oh with the, the tabasco. tacos. Oh, with the Tabasco sauce. Ah, you. There's nothing that tastes better than that, okay. right? Now. Shitty. Okay, it food. worked. It worked. I don't Holy know fuck! Worked, for fuck's sake, it I worked, want. guys. It worked. Yo, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that got a little much. That yeah, was, uh, and see, you can't write stuff much. like that, and we're live. Um, let's get some more <laughs> direction here. Uh, <laughs> Let's go on the opposite. Um, yeah. What's everyone's favorite tour experience? Egg. Eggs? What? What? what no, 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 no. Keep, keep going. I just said that because that's just like a, oh. you know, a, a tick. All right, let's let, 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 let's start. <laughs> I'm with... sorry, you guys. Uh, you don't get it. You don't get it. You don't get it. All right, here. I'm, I've got a good question. Uh, I'll kill a little bit of time. Um, Dan... Mr. Defont, tell us about your first time in Canada. <laughs> Dude, it's crazy because it took me forever to just go to Canada, and it was devastation 2017, and you couldn't get into Canada, oh, so you weren't there right. for this. Even I wish you fucking were, but uh, me too. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I was drinking a little bit on that tour, and then that night. It escalated because the dude that was like co-owner of the venue. Um, I knew him, and he comes up to me. We, we never met before, and so he was like, "Yo, let's take a shot." So I was like, "All right, yeah, for sure." So we take a shot. And, you know, obviously it escalates from there. And then after the show, I barely remember it. And like Brody from Rivers and Nile told me about it mostly the day after, and um, it was pretty much me barely loading out any of the Devastation merch. Mm-hmm. I remember just like handing boxes to other people, being like, "Take this." <laughs> it, was, yeah. it was at Hard Luck. It was the the, the stairs at Hard Luck, and um, and then being outside, like paying like Rivers and Nile and like Zenith Passage, and just like dropping money on the floor, just like all the <laughs> and shit, just drop. So they were like helping me fucking pick it up. And then anyway, so the next morning I wake up, you know, worst hangover ever, probably in the top five for sure. And uh, I remember going to the front lounge of the bus. This is the your Cryptopsy headline. So I was on their bus yeah. and uh, sitting there feeling like I was dying, literally. And uh, Flo, the drummer, gets up. Comes Gold Flo. Yeah. I love, I love. <laughs> he comes to the love front him. bus and he's like, how are you feeling? And I'm like, like I died? And he's like, yeah. <laughs> got fucked up last night. I'm like, yeah. He's like, And I was just like, uh, did I... Did I pay you last night? And he's like, uh, no, no, you didn't. I'm like, oh, <laughs> let me uh, go to my bag and, and, and uh, find that money for you. <laughs> so I go to like, my backpack, or I couldn't find my backpack first. And then I went to my, like, my luggage, like my other bag, my bigger bag, all my clothes. And I'm sitting there. I can't find it. And I'm like, fuck, man. And I'm just sitting there. And all of a sudden, I'm like, let me open up this zipper on this bag. And it was just like this wad of cash. And I'm just like, oh, my fucking God, thank you. So I pay him. And then I'm like, I don't even know where my backpack is. And then Chad, uh, their merch guy, it was like, yo, go look in the shower. So I go in the shower, the bus, and there's my backpack. And But, yeah, it was I was just a fucking mess. It was terrible. <laughs> I literally thought I lost, like, because it was, like, his money, like, Cryptopsy's money, but also, like, the devastation, like, merch money, too. Mm-hmm. So there was more than just their money, and I was just like freaking the fuck out. Dude, and that was, oh. but I didn't even, I didn't even wake up at the border crossing. When we <laughs> went through, the guy, the officer came on the bus to check to see if it was me and my passport. And he guess he just kind of like I've had that before. I think that was, I had that when we went through uh, to Canada with uh, abiotic. I don't remember going through Canada border no. crossing. No. I literally remember being from one part uh, to the other. 
That's it. Oh, wow. But apparently I gave him, like, I, I handed him my passport and everything. I don't remember <laughs> any of it, dude. But I also pissed. Okay, so I also pissed in a bunk. <laughs> no. One, one of these gentlemen slept in. Oh, no. Do you remember that, Alex? Oh, oh I, I, I do. Oh, do you? Oh, I do. <laughs> I, I'm not going to lie, boys. My brain's going, like, fucking everywhere right now. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> do you remember? Oh, no, yeah, sli- I, 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 I remember that very much so. And then I remember there being another sleeping bag on top of the, the wet pissy. Cushion. Yeah, at least you got it where it wasn't like too like pissy. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. if I'm gonna sleep and piss, I'm gonna do it comfortably. Yeah. <laughs> it's like one of my first tours, man. I mean, honestly, up. Hey, know, man, one of mine too. That was yeah. like my, I think third tour ever. Alec, you're you're so lucky you didn't come on the Sociano door. I pissed myself like four or five times. <laughs> <laughs> That's That's respectable. Respectable. That's That's respectable shit. five times. What a fun. I think it's shit, dude. Dave, dude, it it was not a fun time for everybody that was around me. I'm gonna say that. Uh, but what are you gonna do, man? <laughs> I'm gonna piss myself. How are you gonna do it? Um, at Colin, what's, what's uh, one of your favorite shows you've ever mixed? Oh Colin. man, oh. that one's always a fun one, right? Oh, um. My favorite show I've ever met, like as far as when I knew I like super crushed it or just like everything was sick. Um, we could go for both because I've actually got like answers to both too. Oof. You know you know what's funny is like the shows where I've absolutely crushed it are have always been in like smaller rooms. But there's yeah. there's been I've been more consistently <laughs> crushing it in smaller rooms with shot PAs and like have people say how the fuck did you do that and like i don't i don't know i just make things yeah. out um probably <laughs> oh fuck man well probably one of the most the most fun shows slash shows that i crushed it the most out of late was uh in australia i think it was melbourne that was really fun there were like 900 heads it was a revocation and like everything like Everything clicked. Everything was awesome. Like, I hit all my fucking snare bombs, tap delays, everything. Like, oh, snare bombs, sick. Oh, 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 especially oh, oh, oh. that last part with oh, Death Atlas, oh, oh. where it's just like super fucking sad. And you're like, oh, I want to cry, and just pie and snare. You know, awesome yeah. shit. Um, the probably the the most fun show towards the end of the year was what we did in L.A. Like um, specifically because that was the one that Aaron was at. Aaron came to visit me. He gave me a hug. It's fun. I like it. I felt this tap on my shoulder, mixing author and Punisher. I'm like, what? Who is? Who is this? Who is touching me? Oh my god! It's Aaron Stakana. <laughs> um, it was great. I really appreciated that hug. Um, yeah, I made a. a I, I was kind of, you know, uh, a little bass heavy, like I usually am, because you know who doesn't like a big booty. Um, yeah, and, I, I like uh, the low end fat. Yeah, and I I was rattling fucking light bulbs out of the ceiling and oh, like making God. them fall and and God. pop on the floor. It was kind of cool. Uh, One of my favorites is always during like line checks at the beginning is like checking kick, bass, or eight oh eight and seeing what you can get to fall out of the ceiling, <laughs> like the rafters. <laughs> you know? Drop down. <laughs> yeah, just like confetti from other shows and stuff like that, or you know whatever. Uh, like you can always tell if ICP is like played in the last couple months because you can like knock a soda out of the rafter or something. Yeah. Oh, dude, I see ICP, ICP, ICP played yeah, at brick legends. by brick. Don't fuck with them, bro. I, ICP oh, played no, at brick by brick two years ago, and there is still confetti caked to the bro. ceiling in Fago, like you, still from hey. two years ago. You know me and Dave are gonna listen. Are uh, listen to ICP all day, dude. <laughs> all day. Yeah. Um, Have you guys right go now? fuck. Hey. That, that's hey, our fucking tour music. If you're in our van, if we got three, four hey, hours of fucking uh fucking riding, dude. ICP is one of them. Hey. You're gonna have to Will deal with it. You guys go online right now. Go to Google and Google. just type in. How many songs does Insane Clown Posse have? Just just do that for me right now, everybody. I'm going to do that. 
Wait, what was it? What did you say, <laughs> Aaron? <laughs> <laughs> How many songs does a big dog posse have? Just Google it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is quality content. This is yeah, this, this is great. I, I'm taking a fucking screenshot of this right now. and putting <laughs> it in like five screenshots. <laughs> hey, at least three. <laughs> Literally. At least three. <laughs> you got Literally it. Same. At least three. <laughs> <laughs> that one is courtesy of uh, Sammy Morales. He sent me that one. Uh, dude, that's good. Damn. <laughs> oh my god. Um, uh, Aaron. Oh my yeah. God. Favorite show you have ever played? Let's see. Yeah, let's get that oh topic of ICG. Uh, favorite show I've ever played? Yeah, Ooh. man. If it doesn't uh, include me, then uh, I'm I sorry, a, bud. I need another white claw. <laughs> I, I, mean, I have Jake, a white claw right you about and I now. I have only played a <laughs> long time ago. Uh, we should do another one, though. Um, favorite show? <clears throat> one of them was definitely Empiricon Leipzig, just because that was mental. And that was by far insane. one of my favorite shows I've ever mixed. That's like top two, I would say. Yeah, I'm ready to go back to arenas for sure. For sure. <laughs> uh, one of my favorite ones, probably um, <clears throat> Chicago with uh, Boo, honestly. Oh, wow. Born of Osiris home show. I bet that was mental. Yeah, it was. I mean, like, it was a home show. It was, I'm pretty sure, sold out at Chicago House of Blues, which is just like a nice venue. It was the last show of the tour. House they had of Stairs. Crazy homies there. They had like we had cryo and like a, like a crazy stage show. It was just like really fucking fun. That one was uh, super memorable for sure. That looks sick, also, dude. Uh, uh, Alice. At, what's uh, your Gas What's your favorite Gas part about uh, Chicago, Chicago House of House Blues and why is it the stairs? The stairs. And why is it the stairs? Um. Well, my favorite <laughs> part is that uh, I've only played there <sighs> once. And I didn't have to load anything, so it actually wasn't even the stairs was a big well, deal. Well, lucky, lucky you. you. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I was actually pretty fucking lucky, honestly. Yeah, like that was the only tour I've ever done where I had where I had a drum tech, and it was, I mean it wasn't my drum tech; it was Cam's, you know. But he was there, so that was nice. Um, how about you, Colton? Um, my favorite my show. show. Uh, uh, sorry, I, I did like. Uh, uh, is someone's someone speakers, speakers on? Just because I'm good, like a weird. Yeah, I think oh, it's Sharon's potential. Oh, oh, oh Defunct. Yeah, I hear a dub too. Yeah. Okay, now we're good. Sorry, just like tripped me out. Uh, it was a, uh, it was a couple <laughs> yeah. of years ago. Um, it was in Prague, and there was a festival called Brutal Assault, and we were fortunate enough to play main stage. Um, the time slot I think was around. 1 p.m. So going into it, it was like, oh, you know, how many people can be like totally stoked and ready to go at around that time? But it was people out there are so nuts uh, for metal and um, ready to go and party and fucking. We played in front of a huge, biggest crowd I ever played in front of uh, was was at that very moment, 1 p.m. Uh, at this awesome festival. Um, yeah, that was my favorite show. I, we 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 got to hang out with Origin. Uh, uh, we were already good buddies with them from uh, the first time that we toured on Summer Slaughter, where we met Aaron and Alex. And so Origin was there. We got to hang out with them backstage and have drinks and a bunch of other really cool bands. And they treated the they treated the artists like you know. Uh, they treat that was them, nice treat us. when you get it at a fucking venue that treats the artist very well. You know what I mean? Yeah, they had it. Yeah. It felt really. It felt so legit. And yeah. then like that was huge. Even the yeah. openers, right? Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, and the whole day was just a just a fucking amazing ride. We 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 played the show, and then the rest of the day was just hanging with with awesome people, meeting people you never thought you would meet, and and, and just watching the rest of the the artists all night. You know, being backstage and then being like, oh, let's go into the crowd for whoever you wanted to see, and um, that was that was definitely my favorite show of all time. That was super cool. Hell's yeah, yeah. 
it's always cool doing a show like that where you uh, you can kind of like sit back and reflect on like all the stuff that you've done that's like led up to like that little moment. Yeah, you know? right. That's how yeah, I feel well, like with with most of my the shows that I end up in. You know what I mean? Like where like I uh, it, it's nice to be in those moments. Like I've I've been in moments where uh, I was fucking 14 years old watching a wake uh, a Whitechapel show and uh, it was like this big extravagant thing to me but now like I I've, I have those moments where it's like uh, you know I'm going to these shows and we're having drinks together now or uh, with with some of these guys now and uh, it, it kind of uh, it, it shifts my perception a bit but like it's really nice though because like I still get what uh what those kids <laughs> felt like you know what I mean when dude it, you, that's you get... like that's so cool what you're talking about right now right that's so like on the money you know that's like a crazy full circle type thing you know like it's just like when I was a kid like like the reason that I started playing in like a local band and like playing death metal was because of like the faceless. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's just like now look at whole you, circle things like that are are just nuts. Yeah, just yeah. like being friends with people that you used to like idolize or not even idolize, but just people that like were your inspiration. You know, like it's I think it's cool to like be inspired by somebody and then later in life be inspiring other people with the person that inspired you, like alongside. Yeah, that it's shit really is weird. Like, so wild. So it's wild. really weird, man. Man. But it's awesome and it's, it's really cool it's, to. Uh, it's very uh, accomplishing, but at the same time, it does feel like you're like you, it does feel weird, you know? Because like uh, I mean, even having uh, Trevor do a spot on the old, uh, on the new IA album, like I couldn't be more right. thankful for it. You know what I mean? Yeah, like right, right. Th- like that was like he was a person that I looked up to when I was starting to do vocals for him to do any sort of guest feature <laughs> on my band stuff is insane to me you know what I mean so like but now at at the time I'm the that kid's I, I'm that guy you know what I mean just like you are uh Aaron yeah uh, like uh we are the the, the people that want to be that they want to be featured you know what i mean so right, like it, yeah, it's, it's it's funny it's to be to go from the guy that want couldn't imagine being the person that's featuring on your track to being the people that they couldn't imagine being on your track you know what i mean yeah 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 i know man it's uh, like it's super it's really weird crazy and you know what i like i like the way that you're talking about this right now because you're still like very um grateful for it you know a lot of people lose sight of that i feel a lot of people don't really care or just kind of it becomes their life you know what i mean and they're like yeah that's just normal so being able to yeah, step back understandable yeah look, yeah but being able to step back and be appreciative of it and you know like look at where you came from and being like damn like i am so fortunate to be where i am it's cool it's yeah the, well really that's i think experience. everybody needs to have that dude like i mean i don't what uh like I, I, I still feel the same way. I mean, like, mm-hmm. no matter who it is, every single time, it's always somebody new that you just, I didn't, I couldn't believe was a fan of mine. You know what I mean? So it's always every time yeah, you, like, oh, you really, uh, and and <laughs> yeah, bro, you, you thought you had your limit, and then it keeps going, and then like you need, you really need yeah. to stop, uh, like being like. Like y- everybody needs to have a goal, but everybody needs to make sure that that goal isn't their limit. You know what I mean? Dude, and I know like, exactly. That's what mean. how I yeah. how I felt. Yeah, I couldn't like, imagine. Like, Sorry. When I was when I was a kid, right? Like the things that I've done now, as far as like bands that like that I'll play with or like you know tour with or places that I've gone and shit like that, like. I've already exceeded what I wanted to do when I was a kid. You know, like when I was a kid, like my goals went as far as like being in a band, maybe signing to like a record label, touring around like the country or something, you know? So it's like, I think exceeding those dreams and those goals makes me more like confident and comfortable in like the goals yeah. and dreams that I have nowadays, you know? Like right. if I'm like, fuck, dude, 
in my, 10 years, I want to be in a band where I'm playing like arenas every night. And it's like, damn, that seems so far out of reach. But then it's like, you've already reached. Yeah, you already that way reached that point. Out of your reach. So you thought yeah, when exactly. you were younger. You yeah, know? No. Yeah, no, I feel that too. Like, because like, yeah. bro, like when I was a kid, I, I my main goal was I wanted to be a uh, in a band that was signed to Metal Blade Records. And yeah, I, that was. Oh, boom. Yeah. I got, they added me, I, I, I accomplished that, we did those tours, and it just wasn't for me, you know, like, we just, we yeah. didn't, sure. it, the, it, it just wasn't for me, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I ended up branching off and uh, quitting that, because before the album, that was my thing, I was like, I just didn't want to uh, record the album and then quit, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. I'd rather yeah. just quit sure. before the sure. album. And I know that kind of fucked them in a little bit, uh, a bit. But at the same time, I'd rather not be the guy that just did a whole album and then just went boom, I'm out. So, I fucking I I dipped out of that, and I mean, in a in a way, it worked for me because I I I was going through a lot of bullshit, you know, personal stuff like everybody does. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think that's another thing that uh, a lot of people in the music industry don't really realize we all go through our own little personal days oh, yeah. you know what i mean yeah a little more things Everyone that knows. happen yeah that, that, that some days the, yeah the, 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 the people don't really understand or don't really want to give credence to you know they just kind of see what's on the surface yeah exactly sure. i i did things uh way more focused on uh what i was going through than i was on the career that I wanted, you know what I mean? So that it, it really pro postponed a lot of time. And I mean, I got really thankful for getting, uh, Aaron and Eddie, uh, Eddie to, uh, see me who I, uh, uh, as I was, you know, it, it's pretty, sick. it's interesting, man. That's it's awesome. very interesting. That's awesome. I fucking, yeah. man. <laughs> <laughs> we don't uh, talk enough, Aaron. Uh, God damn it. <laughs> I'm gonna. I actually the lost the uh, the Twitch stream on my end, so I'm not actually able to see any more comments. So that could be a blessing or a curse. Um, uh, I don't see any uh, on my end. Boys, we're cool. sitting here at two and a half hours. I'm gonna be the first one to say it. I kind of gotta um, <clears throat> roll out. I don't know. Yeah, if you I was actually about to say we're we're like right. yeah, we're this nearing is the a uh, good time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, does anybody plan on streaming after this, and we can go ahead and get some raid action going in? Um, I don't. Later. I don't plan on uh, streaming, but you can get uh, Trevor. Trevor's on. Uh, Trevor. Yeah, he's he's on right now. Uh, What's oh, his yeah. handle again? What's Trevor his Snart. Just his okay. fucking name. Yeah, I, totally um, I guess th this is the point of the show too, where I'm gonna go to everyone, um, plug what you're doing, um, what you want go anyone Don't watching to know. Plug everybody else first, man. I gotta, I gotta pee. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah. my god, yeah. Yeah, you wait like till it's over. It's almost done. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> everyone knows who Jake is. Defiance, what are you doing? I'm um, starting the stream, but uh, I don't have a full setup yet. But so it's pretty generic right now. But you can find me on Twitch as Dan Fonts. And then, you know, check out Continental Cor Touring, Unique Leader Records, Devastation on the Nation Tour. Check all those out. Don't miss out. Yes. Aaron. Aaron. Uh, oh, I, uh, most of Most of what I would say is just uh, interloper stuff. My band, we're coming out with um, <laughs> like a couple different releases, probably spaced out between like six to eight months. Um, so, yeah, so we'll, we'll be announcing who, uh, which record label we sign with, whenever we release the um, <clears throat> the first of the, of the two albums. It'll just like coincide the launch of <laughs> announcement, Aaron. and then and then the record. Aaron. So yeah, can I ask sure. you a quick yeah. question? Do you want to um, tell everyone? Like, are you offering lessons or any of that? Anyone doing that? Anyone who want to plug yeah, that in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, if anybody wants Plug. to take drum lessons, I'm, I'm teaching all the time, and I'm offering session work. Like, I'll write drums for people, record drums yeah. for people. I, I uh, film, like, I mean, all of my stuff is in-house as far as, like, filming and engineering and stuff. So if you need me to write, you want me to, like, make a drum video cover of your song or whatever. I mean, anything that has to do with me playing drums for you, I can do it. So 
Yeah, if you want, sure. Yeah, I'll I'll uh, plug that right up. Hell yeah, that's what I was gonna Sweet. ask. Sweet. And then uh, Colton, Alex what about you? Me. What do you want to What do you want to tell everyone? Um, I'm writing a ton of new Angel Maker. Uh, it's on overdrive right now. I'm writing like so much music. I have like a side project called Black Clothes, and I do like and an- anything oh, from sick. like horror horror synth to like right now. I'm working on like a punk album, a punk cover album, and a, and also a black metal <clears> album. <throat> Uh, but yeah, tons of new Angel Maker is is in the works, and uh, and uh, we're uh, really really excited about it. So yeah, yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, that's awesome, man. I can't wait to see Angel Maker back out there. Hopefully, we can tour yeah. together again soon. Yeah, yeah, we're not going Colin. anywhere. We're gonna we're gonna get through this. Hell yeah, we will do it. Colin, yeah. what are, what are you plugging? <laughs> Dan, up? What Dan, are you, Dan, we will do it. Up. We will do it, boys. <laughs> Um, I'm I'm Love plugging my fans in because it's fucking hot in here. It's 81 degrees in my room. Um, what are you yeah, doing? You are wearing a hoodie, on, baby. Yeah, it's just so hot. Hands are sweating. So sweaty. I got the swamp butt bad. But um, <laughs> but anyways, for reals. Um, Ash and Earth. Anyone watching is... wants to like freaking hire you to mix or something or like watch yeah. your band or hear your band. How do how do they contact you? I was gonna say Ash and Earth um, on Facebook, Spotify, all of the things. It's the old record right now. Um, many band members old, um, but the new one is um, almost done. Uh, it's pretty cool. I'm pretty proud of the music. Um, it's really fucking. Uh, fun to play. It's fun to listen to, um, especially when you're playing uh, fantasy video games. Um, and uh, that should be out pretty soon. Um, it's more of a, just kind of a project of love um, between a bunch of nerds. So that's a lot of fun. So um, but uh, yeah, uh, send me all of your tracks and songs and I will mix them because I have nothing to do. And I have all of the Waves <laughs> plugins. Um, okay. keep, me, keep me occupied. Uh, so I don't kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Um, Dickie, plug everyone up. Uh, fucking A, man. I, uh, but, I mean, we have new stuff coming, scumfuck-wise. Uh, oh, yeah. I can't... I'm NDA'd out of my mind right now. <laughs> uh, I, I really can't say too, too much, but there's, there's yeah, some yeah, fun fair enough. stuff. Yeah, uh, yeah, coming about yeah i'm i uh there's new fun stuff coming about um just really keep about uh, an eye out on uh infinite annihilator's page and uh Ooh. um scumfuck um, obviously uh-huh. scumfuck's got some new uh shit coming as well so but obviously Cut. everybody everybody just wants to see new ia so you know yeah, yeah. no I want to hear maybe and maybe not. It's happening. I don't know. Fuck. I want to hear some of this new scum fuck you've been working. I got. Uh, I want to hear some I called. Scumfuck. I called dibs for the first IA show. Yeah, he's already got it. He's already got it. I- I'm booking the tour, man. Yeah, yeah. Everybody, <laughs> we, we already know what's happening. Everybody wants yeah. to do the ball. And Dan at the at the wheel. We get, we got it. We got. It. It's all set. It was really so, good to talk man, to you guys. Uh, it was really awesome yeah, that, to see all your faces. Colin, it's nice to meet you. I don't think we've officially uh, met. Uh, nice to meet you too, bud. Hope to see you soon. Of course. Yeah. Hey, bud. Kyle, um, <laughs> I'm up Kyle you got anything Valorant. you want to plug? You want to play some games? I'll play some Valorant, bro. All right. You know, plugged. Next. Sorry. We're all plugged. Um, yeah, um, I think we're good. Side note, um, I'm going to hop on Warzone after this if you guys want to jam on some Warzone. I'm down. Yeah. Right after? Uh, pretty soon. I'll probably have like a 10-15 minute yeah, chill minute. smoke period. Hit your battle tags in the chat gonna, if you want to play. I'm gonna go take some dabs. And yeah, Daniel, we, I gotta get okay, your we'll I gotta get you on Warzone. Battle chat. Yeah, we oh play. yeah. Well, yo, we can keep this chat going um, in the group chat we have on Facebook. Oh yeah, um, for sure. Totally. Uh, thank you yeah, guys so much for, uh, for all of your time. Thank you for coming thank you, on. Alex. Thank you, man. I really appreciate it. This was fun. Cheers. Was fun. Cheers. I made sure I had a fucking Paper bag for this stream, bud. Let's <laughs> <laughs> go. Right. Good luck. Good boys. Cheers, Bye, guys. guys. Thank Thanks you so much. much. Cheers. Later. Talk Peace. to you guys. Later, guys.
Anybody get on the bus? Are you ready?